Yes guys, it's Tom here. I'm a professional FIFA player for XL and I'm here today to teach you how to attack in the 4-4-2. So tip number one is going to be the player lock. We can see in this clip here, I have the ball with my left midfielder and I press L1 to trigger his run. However, I'm not happy with where he's running. So I use the player lock effectively to control my striker. You press the left and right analog stick in at the same time and then press the right stick to who you want to receive the ball with. So. Now what I want to do with my striker is bend my run round the centre back so when I receive the through ball I'm going to be bearing down on goal which is exactly what we do here it now means I'm in a very dangerous position and we apply the finishing touch using a chipped finish. So tip number two is how to effectively use the driven pass so as we can see in this clip I pick the ball up out wide my left midfielder and I'm looking to create the angle of passing to one of my two strikers. So I managed to recycle the ball. I go back to my midfielder. And as we can see, I've triggered my striker's run and I have two strikers to hit now, which I want to hit with the driven pass. To perform the driven pass, we use R1 and X at the same time. And we can see here, as I use it, it comes perfectly into the space and I get my shot off before the center back can get there. Possession in attack. So what does this actually mean? Well, I've noticed from all my years playing FIFA that a lot of people are in a rush to get to the goal and try and score as quickly as possible. Sometimes that means we don't pick the right passes. As we can see in this clip here, I'm gonna recycle the ball. I have the ball with my striker and I'm looking for my other striker or my midfielder that's making an advanced run. I noticed very quickly that he's got both of these passes covered and this is when I make the decision that it's best to recycle the ball and be patient in attack. Here, I pass the ball backwards, and I notice that the area of the pitch is very, very congested in the middle. As a result of this, I go out wide to my left back. He's got the space to attack, and my aim here is to try and bring out a couple of them players in the middle area. It's way too congested to create a chance, so my aim is to try and attack the space as much as possible to start pulling these players out of position. I drive forward. And we can see a couple of mid midfielders have now come out to engage with the ball. And it means that I can rotate the ball around the area and try and find the right pass. So I go back to my midfielder, who goes into my striker. And now we're in a very, very dangerous position. We can see that recycle has helped me get to this spot here. As I get the ball, the pass opens up to my striker. And that's where we get the goal. I've been Tom. I hope you've all enjoyed my 4-4-2 masterclass. And I'll see you all on the pitch.
What's going on everyone? Olelito here. I'm a professional FIFA player for Ninjas in Pajamas and today I will be showing you a master class how to defend in FIFA 22. In this master class I will be showing you first of all how to play a switch, how to pressure play and how to use your center backs in the best kind of way. First of all I have the ball with my CM here. The thing is that I play a very very sloppy pass here trying to reach my other CM. The thing though here though is that the R1 pass in FIFA 22 is super 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 effective. And why? Because the accuracy of the pass is very, very good. So the thing I want to do here, first of all, is to bumper switch to the closest player in this case, that's closest to, to the striker making a running behind, which is my center back. So I'm switching to my center back here, as you see, and from now on, I'm in front of the ball. So most likely I will get it, which happens. And after that, I can start my attack and hopefully score a goal. The second topic I want to talk about today is where to press and I can tell you for a fact that this will improve your defense in FIFA 22. So as you see here, I'm brave enough here to be able to control my center back and trying to put pressure on his winger. And I'm actually at the same time as I'm putting pressure on his winger here, as you see in this clip, I'm also cutting off the passing lane to his winger then making a run in behind. So, the thing I'm doing here is to always still put pressure on him because he feels like I'm very very close to him all the time. He makes a rush decision and the outcome of this then is that he is running out with the ball, I'm getting a throw in and, and I can start my attack from there. The third topic of today is how to use the center backs. And I think it's a very very hard thing in this FIFA to do. First of all, I see that he is starting a very dangerous counter attack. So he gets the ball into his striker. The thing that, that is going on in my head here is I need to put pressure on the ball holder. So the, th the thing I'm doing first of all is to put the R1 pressure with your R1 bumper on your controller with my right center back here, which allows him to basically don't have any passing options here. So as you see, the only thing he can do is to go forward. But at the same time here, I see that he has tried to do the play lock option which you do by pressing down your L3 and R3 at the same time. So, I'm switching to my left center back here to be able to cover the space in behind, which can be very, very dangerous because we know these through balls in this game are, are uh, effective. So, I'm switching to my center back, but at the same time, trying to put pr pressure on the ball holder, which then results in me getting the ball and starting a good attack. So guys, this has been Ulelito for you all. Uh, thank you so much for watching this masterclass. See you on the pitch.
Were you there? When Tex shocked the world in Barcelona? This kid, I mean, he's come out of nowhere, DH Tex. When Blue Agoo did this to win the Summer Cup. Were you watching when MS Desire became king of the jungle? And when Dilla Mike scored with a rainbow flick? Did you witness Levy's five goal comeback to win back to back championships in his rookie season? Finally starts to kick in as well, the tears on the side of Gravison. Well, the moment Gravison sealed his ticket to the World Cup. You know, there's nothing I love more than FIFA Esports. Were you there for this? Or this? Or any of this? Masters are back to make history. Will you be there? and Man City FIFA Pro Ryan Pessoa because this is the FGS Masters Cup. Last week we saw four of the world's best FIFA duos battle it out for a top prize of $15,000 and prize and we get to do it all again tonight and every single Monday in March. Ryan Pessoa last weekend was just awesome. The teams today have got to really up their game haven't they? Yeah, they really do. Of course, great to be alongside you again. But last week we saw some high scoring games, some fantastic goals as well. And I'm hoping for the same this week. Yeah, absolutely. We're hoping for the same as well. If you guys did miss last week, don't worry. Check this out. Here we go. So semi-final one looked like this. It was Blue taking on XL and Blue had it all their way in leg one. XL though, they came back firing in leg two and it actually ended 5-1 and they progressed to the final. Then semi-final two, Fnatic and Footwiz. Fnatic had it all their way. They just kept scoring for fun. 9-1 that finish. This was the final. Fnatic and XL. XL, those boys, Tom and Gorilla, came out on top. 2-1 was the final score there. Ryan, that was something special. Two Goliaths, weren't they, in the eSports e world. And XL coming out on top after Fnatic in the semis 9-1. That was a bit of a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, I'd say it was a surprise just because of how well Fnatic done in their matchup against the Footwiz. They were dominant. They scored so many goals. So you thought it would go the same way in the final, but XL, they played fantastic. Yeah, it made it a super exciting week, week one. And we're hoping for much more of the same this week and for the next three weeks as well. This is how the schedule looks then tonight and for the next two weeks after that. So tonight, as you can see, we have Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas, Ajax, then Neo and Guild. Then we've got next week, March the 21st, four more awesome teams. And then the week after that as well, four more to wrap things off for the Masters Cup in March. Prize money, I already mentioned it last week. Top place took home $15,000. It's actually a prize pool of $25,000 and it's broken down as followed. Second place in $5,000 and third and fourth, two and a half thousand dollars goes to them. Obviously they split it because there's two people in a team. Nice for a Monday night. Ryan, how's tonight looking? What's the bracket looking like? Yes, you've mentioned teams already on display today at first. We do have a Team Hullets and Ninjas in Pyjamas up against AFC Ajax. That'll be an interesting game. And of course... Again, four awesome teams again there. I think we just lost Ryan for a sec. Obviously, we're broadcasting all over the place as usual. But yeah, Ryan was just taking you through the bracket tonight. Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas, I already mentioned them taking on Ajax. And then we've got Neo taking on Guild a little bit later. They're both our semi finals, of course. So let's have a little bit um, more of a look into Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas then. And one of their players who are going against them, obviously, we've got Team Ajax. I mentioned them a little bit earlier. And we've got a veteran of the game, haven't we? Ajax Levy is a. Uh, 
one of the guys that is actually competing for them. He's obviously going to be competing against uh, with Ajax Finn, um, and he's a Goliath in the game. Let's have a little bit of a look back at how he competes across FIFA. <laughs> Let's levy from the restart here. He's going to be looking for the first opportunity and Neymar's got some space to drag back at the finish. There it is. Levy takes the lead. And again, it is absolutely wonderful. He's an artist in front of goal. So we're finally here at the finish line. Whoever wins this one, $100,000. Levy could lead by three. Composure at his finest. This man has been around the block. Penalties await, unless there's a goal now. Neymar into CR7, back to Neymar! Levy Frederick, and that should be enough to become an Xbox champion for the first time ever. Well, Ryan is back, yes. And Ryan, I never know what to celebrate more, actually. Brandon's commentary or Levy's celebration, both exceptional there, because obviously he was a champion, wasn't he, in 2021. Tell us a little bit more about his achievements. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps seeing that the celebrations from Levy. Of course, he's been competing for a number of years now. He's been around for for before I came into the scene. He's 27 and of course he is the reigning champion, the FIFA 21 Europe Playoffs champion last year on Xbox. Of course, competing in the Eredivisie as well, where they ranked third place. And of course, his teammate representing AFC Ajax today is AFC Finn. Contrary to his age, he's very, very young compared to Levy. 16 years of age, broke through and it's his first year competing. He's the youngest player to represent AFC Ajax Esports. So we're hoping today he can put his talent on display today. Yeah, I love that he got on that IX roster, didn't he? By actually going through a bit of a competition. The Zigo E battle. Yeah. So I absolutely love that story from Finn. Ryan, let's have a look at their opponents then today. Team Hullet, ninjas in pyjamas. I mean, they've got quite the team, haven't they? They really do. Up first, of course, is Team Hullet's ninja pyjamas, Ole Lito, who has been competing now for a number of years at the highest level, winning his first tournament in FIFA 20. It was FIFA 20 Champions Cup number three. And of course, followed that year with the FIFA 20 Summer Cup Series. He's come on leaps and bounds, of course, finishing runners up last year in the E-Prem. But yeah, an all round consistent performer. And up next is his teammate, Team Hullet's Levy David. Again, he's very, very young, similar to Ajax, um, Ajax Finn, he's a year older. But again, the accolades he had last year, he was the only player to win back to back for Champions Cups, which it was hard enough to qualify for one, but to win both back to back is, it was unheard of. So yeah, it's a fantastic combination. Totally. I mean, two pretty scary duos there, Ryan. I don't think I'd like to go up against either of them. I guess I'm going to say Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas, and a bit of a new team there. And then you've got the veteran, like you said, over uh, on the other team for Ajax. Uh, but that's enough from Ryan and myself. It's time to get into semi-final one of week two of the FGS Masters Cup with our two favourite FIFA commentators. We've got Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Guys, I hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, we certainly will. Thank you very much, Rachel and uh, Ryan Pessoa. We're back again, myself, Richard Buckley. Myself, Richard Buckley? Myself, Brown Smith and Richard Buckley for week two of these FGS Masters Cup. Without hanging about for very long, we've got our first semi-final on the way right now. It's Ninjas in Pyjamas and Team Hullet coming together this year in the Global Series up against AFC Ajax in the first game. Rich, I'm looking forward to this one. What about you? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it so much. It's going to be an incredible game. We can have a look at the team that Team Holly and Ninja in Pajamas will be rocking in this first squad. The Prime Icon moments are available for the players to use. You can see a lot of Team of the Year items in there. Maybe the one player that you're looking at thinking, how has he got in that foot? Future stars, Jude Bellingham, one of the best overall centre midfielders in the entire game. He can attack, he can defend, he's physical, he can do everything that is required. Pair him alongside Rude Hullet and you've got a formidable duo in the middle of the park. The other side of it, Brandon. Ajax's squad, incredible team that it is. Without any further ado, we are getting into the game very shortly indeed. It's the FGS Masters Week 2 here. 
Team Hullet Ninja in Pajamas up against AFC Ajax. Ninja in Pajamas from left to right. It's going to be Team Hullet Ninja in Pajamas. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, Olilito and Levy De Weed, two serial winners in their own right in that Team Hullet strip from left to right. And in the famous Ajax from right to left, it's going to be Finn and Levy. Early chance here. Hakimi does well, but it's Ronaldo who wins it off him. Pele now inside the box, looking for the cutback. Doesn't fall to a blue shirt in the end, and Ajax will bring it away. Quite a lot of pressure here, you've got to say, because the formidable face that you typically put in with Ajax, Danny Hackerberg, not selected here. Finn and Levy, the two players that Ajax have put forward as part of the FGS Masters squad. These are the two that's been playing in the Edivise as well, so expect a lot of chemistry and good communication from these two as they look to build up possession here inside the opening 10 minutes. A loose pass, and I expect to see a lot of that over the next few hours. Rude Holly picking up the ball and being able to spread the play. It's now R9 looking to get in behind. First time we've seen Primarco moments, R9 involved at the FGS stage. Holly sprays it out wide, and Hakimi will bring it forward. Played over two legs, so it's not going to be rushed. It's going to be patient. It's going to be precise from all of the squads. And I'll probably say that maybe a, a slightly bit more competitive than last week. I, I think last week, XL Fnatic, they were certainly maybe two of the front runners, but Blue and Footways certainly put up tough fights. This week, I think any of the four teams could win it. I'm so, so excited to watch Guild later on today. Nicholas Razek, Nicholas 99 FC. How will those two fare? Chance here for Ajax. Pele, Makinos with a heroic tackle at the back. This picked up by Ronaldo. He looks to play inside, and Akimi comes across. Corner for Ajax. 15 minutes in, maybe a breakdown in communication as the ball is run straight out of play. And they're the sort of things that even the very best will do. Communication is key in 2v2 FIFA. 20 minutes gone here. By Team Hully and Ninjas in pyjamas. We'll get Brandon Smith back on the line very shortly indeed. As Rachel said, it's all a remote broadcast and he will be joining me very shortly indeed. But as of right now, Richard Buckley on the mic guide you through this opening exchange. Mbappe looking to build into the box. Great finesse shot. Great save as well from Edwin van der Sar. Ajax escape early pressure here from Team Hully and Ninjas in pyjamas. They've all gone with N'Golo Kante in the middle of the pitch. So look, actually, just having a, a glance at it, that Rude Hully is involved in the squad as that ball is fired out wide to João Cancelo now. He plays back into N'Golo Kante, Pele on the turn. Good tackle by the man of the moment, Jude Bellingham. And possession will come away here for Team Hully and Ninjas in pyjamas. What a collaboration. By the way, I mean, when you we talk about two esports organizations coming together and saying, you know what, let's do something special. FGS Masters, it's right around the corner. <sighs> two of the, I mean, Levy Dawid proved it last year. Back to back wins, as Ryan said, but he also did it in the winner's bracket. He did not drop a game of FIFA esports in the FGS for two months. He did not lose for two months. Just say, take that in, let it sink in for a second. This man, 17 years old, and He's already got a CV as illustrious as many people who's been involved 10 years or plus. Levy got his, Levy Frederic, that is, for Ajax, got his breakout moment last year, winning the playoffs. Chance here for Ajax, Mbappe on the finesse shot. It's charged down by Marquinhos and R9 Ronaldo given the responsibility of bringing possession the other way. Obviously, can't forget about. Oli Lito, multiple different trophies to his name. His crowning moment come in FIFA 20 in Atlanta. FGS Cup number three, that was. Chance here, Jude Bellingham, 10 minutes before half time here. He fires it into Pele, back into Jude Bellingham. Rude Hullet now. That slow build-up that we expected here from Team Hullet and Ninja in pyjamas. R9 gets down the left flank, looking to fire it across with a driven pass into the path of Kevin De Bruyne, I think that was, and possession will turn out here for AFC Ajax. Kante is the six in the pivot. He'll be the man looking to anchor in front of that defence, clean up any danger 
that is there for this Ajax squad. Approaching half time here, four legs of FIFA, I should say four halves, two legs of FIFA in front of you between these two squads. Extra time and penalties if it is required after the two 90 minutes have elapsed. Messi looking to play inside down that right hand side. Jao Cancelo comes across. He can play any of the positions outfield from left back all the way to left striker. Can the team, the uh, Man City defender. Alongside him, Ruben Diaz giving you the perfect chemistry across that back four. Not too bad. It's quite rare, actually, that we see the uh, team of the year that's selected in FIFA, Ultimate Team, have such good chemistry. I think you can get pretty much all the players in on 10 chemistry, minus maybe Lewandowski. Certainly FIFA thought if you've got the coins to spend on those blue items. Messi will bring it clear here for Ajax. He looks to play over the top, and that will do us for half time. 45 minutes gone here in the FGS Masters between Team Hully, Ninja in Pyjamas and AFC Ajax. The early chance falling to Team Hully and Ninja in Pyjamas. It was a finesse shot from the right-hand side of the box, but nothing came of it in the end. It was a good save by Edwin van der Sar, and we're going to get back underway very shortly for the second half of action. 4-4-2 in use for Team Hully, Ninja in Pyjamas. It's Mbappe and... R9 Ronaldo leading the line with Cristiano Ronaldo. Surprisingly, not in the starting 11. Messi and Pele, the two players, as the wide flanks. And I'll be joined very shortly indeed by good friend and co-commentator Brandon Smith. Join me for the second half. Brandon, didn't miss too much in the first half. Early chances from Team Hoyt Ninja in pyjamas, but we're back underway for the second period. Yeah, and it's nice to be back as well. I mean, I had the opportunity of watching that first 45 from the sidelines in this opening game of the FGS Masters Cup, as you rightly said, Team Hullet. The team that the better of the chance in that half. It was a brilliant save by the Ajax legend himself, Edwin van der Sar. But other than that, 0-0 goalless scoreline in this one. Remember, those that are just tuning in, this is coming your way every week in March. Monday Night FIFA, we're calling it. 16 FGS Masters teams battling out with $25,000 every single week. Of course, the winner picking up $15,000. Last week, we saw XL Esports really showcase how good they are. And why, well, again, they are one of our Masters teams to watch out for this year. It's interesting when you were speaking about Ajax, Richard, in terms of the roster they're putting forward. Of course, they picked up Levy Frederic last year, just after the FIFA 21 season concluded. He was a player that did qualify for the FIFA E World Cup. 27 years of age, he's been around the block for quite some time and it only felt right for the Dutch side to put pen to paper with him for this season. No Danny Hackerberg at the moment, I believe there's a lot of squad rotation going on internally. Of course, they do play in the E Divisa, week by week FIFA competition. And Ajax Finn's an interesting story, Richard. 16 years of age, the youngest player to play for AFC Ajax Esports, but came through the ranks with the Zigo E battle, another opportunity that's basically gave one player the chance to sign a professional FIFA Esports contract with a team that is certainly doing it the right way of IFC Ajax. Yeah, we've been there before, actually, at the uh, Zigo E battle. A couple of times we saw... Tass in that particular tournament. We saw Danny win the tournament. Uh, 2017, if memory serves me correct. We went back in 2019, where Gabinho was successful in, in lifting a trophy and getting a contract for a year. And now Finn is the man who's seemingly doing everything right at the moment for Ajax. Chance for Ninja Pajamas and Team Hullet. They will take the breakthrough. After just 61 minutes on the clock, it's the man himself you can see on the screen, the only person to go back to back as a European champion last year in the Global Series. And certainly they have been the team that have been on top ever so slightly in this game, Richard. They take the, the first breakthrough with just 29 minutes left on the clock. And it's the perfect start for the Swede and the Dutch duo that have come together this year as a serious force in the FGS season. Oh, what a duo it is. Talent level off the charts, and the question was, how would they mesh as a duo? We, we've seen it a lot of times before when you put two individual greats together, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get 
a fantastic duo out of it, but they certainly seem to be doing the business at the moment, do. Team Hull, it's Levy Weed and Ninja in Pajamas, Olilito. This collaboration is being successful at the moment, leading one goal to nail here against AFC Ajax. See the goal again on replay. It was Messi into Jude Bellingham, the man that we've highlighted. Quite a bit so far today on the broadcast, Richard. What is it about that future star and the English youngster that is just so viable and so usable in these teams that we're going to be seeing time and time again? I mean, he's so well-rounded. Not only is he incredibly quick, he can defend, but he's also physical stats, the stats that maybe you overlook. Things like composure, reactions, aggression, all in the high 90s. He just ticks every box that you need. Here comes Ajax for the first rule. The goal is Pele looking to drive this attack forward. Pele still, he's not gone down to ground. Maybe could have scoop turn, ball roll. All the skill moves around the steal. The chance is just about alive. Recycled well from Cristiano Ronaldo. Finds the feet of Kevin De Bruyne. Ronaldo picks it back up and eventually Team Hullet. Ninjas in pyjamas will stand strong. A big win from Eusebio. Just to keep that pressure. On the side. Remember, every game is over two legs, the normal FIFA Esports format of an aggregate scoreline that will be the main player in which way this will go, and he'll be making it into the grand final this time out. Pele can't find a way through it, should go out for a corner as AFCI has continued to put this pressure on. Been playing as a duo quite heavily within the Divise, but not just that, they have been playing regularly. Within the FIFA E Club World Cup qualifiers, where they currently sit fourth on the consistency rankings, no doubt they want to be sitting top of that pile. They play their FIFA in Conference 2 in Division 1 in Europe. And that's one thing that we're going to have to look into, probably of all the FGS Masters teams, Richard, because there's been a lack of 2v2 opportunities. We saw it last week with the four FGS Masters teams, and they said this was really their biggest opportunity to date to really play for big cash. On a live broadcast of all the lights on, the ball into the box, could be headed down, could be on for two, I tell you what! What about that for a finish? From Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas, it's total football from them! Takes it back inside to R9, who chests it down, taps into the back of the net. And that's a two-goal scoreline that's going to give them a serious lift, heading into that second leg. Well, ball's whipped into the back post. You're asking questions, can Ronaldo knock it down? Can he be the provider? Just seemingly sort of so comfortable at the back post. Simple knockdown. When FIFA's played like that, played like that it's an easy game. It really is. And you see Olilito on your screen there. He's making FIFA look easy and has been for the last two and a half, three years now. Well, 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 suddenly has become mountain to climb for AFC Ajax. Who have not much fun in terms of playing for tests in recent years within the Divisa itself. They actually matched against Levy David, who does play his FIFA 4 for Tess. Renzo, who's sitting behind him, does coach that. The test side, they beat Ajax back in round two of the Divise this time round. They're actually probably due to play them again very soon in the league maybe, format. Their finals come up later in June. Also, on the flip side for Levy Frederic Rich, he was playing for FCM in last year. He was on the back end of 11 2 defeat to the test in last year's finals, where again Levy David was part of that team alongside Renzo. Back then, they were teammates. Obviously, Renzo now moving into that coaching role. So, Ajax have a bit more on this one then. So no. Starting to uh, see a familiar pattern in what you just said there, and it's people not able to defeat Levy the Weed across different competitions, you name it. He's such a tough nut to crack. Nice looking. Just for one goal, Richard, to take into that second leg wall. Certainly give him something to build upon. Obviously, these are 
A selection of our FGS teams. That could be the mistake they've been waiting for this game. A little dink into the path for Cristiano Ronaldo. He can't find that clean touch that he was looking for. And to be honest, I think, I think that's going to do us with... for the first leg here in the FGS Masters Cup. It will be the, the duo of Olilito and Levy David as Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas that will take a two-goal cushion against the Dutch duo in Levy and Finn at the halfway point. Here in the FGS Masters Cup at the halfway point, it is two goals to nil to the team you can see there. We're off for a quick break now. When we get back, the second leg will be underway. He'll be making the grand finals here in the FGS Masters Cup. What's up guys? How are you guys doing? My name is Danny Fisser, professional FIFA player for Team Gullit and I said and today I'm going to show you how to use the player look as a pro. Okay, so the first topic is from your fullback to your winger. Okay, so let's break down this first clip. At, at first you want to learn how to use the player lock, of course. You need to press L3 and R3 at the same time. You want to switch to one of your other players, in this case the winger, and you do that by flicking your right stick to your winger. Let's look at it. We get the ball with the right back, we player lock and Bappe, and then of course the important thing is not to pass it immediately, uh, but to make a run first because the AI will control the right back. So you don't have to worry about that. Walk into the little space in the middle because that creates a lot of space for the other players as well. Look at who has a lot of space. In this case, it's the striker. Pass it to your other striker because that's the easy choice to score a goal and finish it. So the second topic I want to talk about is to how to use the player lock in the box. We send our striker on a run. We run with our center mid and then the second player lock happens. And in this case, our striker is completely covered. The defender is standing in front of him. No space whatsoever. But because of the player lock, we can create the space and score a goal. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. This was Danny Fisser with how to use the player lock as a pro. See you soon. Welcome back to the FGS Masters Cup as you join us at the halfway point in our first semi-final. Before we go into it though, we've got something exciting to tell you about and that is the FIFA 22 PlayStation Tournament's Open Series. If you're sitting there and thinking, you know what, I fancy playing a bit of FIFA and testing myself out. Get involved in weekly and daily tournaments against people at all skill levels with the PlayStation Tournament's menu. You can win cash, in-game currency, dynamic themes and avatars. All you've got to do if you're interested in getting involved is compete.playstation Dot com. Sign up with your PSN ID to play right now. You can also access it via the Events and Tournaments tab on your PS4. And trust me, it's worth getting involved in. Back to this, though. You join myself, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley, for the call of the FGS Masters Cup. Richard, at the halfway point, it's a bit of a mountain, isn't it, for AFC Ajax to climb? Yeah, it's a it's a big hill for them to climb. Certainly, they find themselves in a in a troublesome position at the halfway point, two 0 down. But they've got the quality, they've got the talent, and they've got a very clear and concise game plan in front of them. They need to turn this game around. They need to put the pressure on. They need to force 
Team Hull in Ninja in pyjamas, Oilito and Levy into mistakes and take the game. Well, then we're back on the way. It will be Team Hullet in Ninja pyjamas from right to left in this game. I wonder why it's a bit of a double barrel name. It's basically two esports organizations that have come together this year. As the abbreviation of TG Ninjas, they were selected one of the FGS teams this year. The mastered squad that will be playing in that April team of the season cup. It's a solid roster they've got as well, as we said, Levy David and Olilito teaming up as the perfect duo. AFC Ajax, though, with new fresh blood in their team, looking for a goal back in this one. Ronaldo gets a deflection. Ronaldo goes for a corner. No one played short, sure. Insulino Messi. They need a good start here, do the Dutch side. They need a hero of some sort, Mbappe looking to drive the attack forward. Is there a cutback available? Goes back to De Bruyne, it's another block at the back this time, Hakimi. The Moroccan team in the in-game item will come across to save the day. But still, there's no let through as of yet. How important is it, Richard, that Ajax get that first goal in this one? Oh, it's massively important. They have to put Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas under pressure because at the moment, it's very, very comfortable for them. They got those two goals. It's been sort of pedestrian at the moment for Olilito and Levy. They're in a really, really easy position. And what Ajax need to do, it's very simple. They need to get a goal. They need to almost just force them into coming out and playing a bit more aggressively and matching their pace. Hello. Like to build a lovely scoop. Turn. Oh! oh, that's a perfect way to respond for AFC Ajax. And you can see it from the reaction of Olilito, especially as he just clinches his teeth. He knows what a goal that is. And what a start for Ajax. We were crying out for a reaction from the Dutch side. And what a way to respond, Richard Pele. Lovely little ball roll into the top bin, barring in. Perfect start for Ajax in this one. Right, I laid out the game plan very easily for them, and they are following it at the moment. Great finish from Pele. Doesn't get much sweeter than that. Left left corner couldn't be hit any better. He's on the finesse shot. Van der Sar stands up well to it. Great finish for Ajax, and they're right back in this game. After a very mediocre first leg for them, they've come out flying in the second leg. I think we have to talk about it very briefly in terms of, of Ajax Finn that's coming to the roster here of the Dutch side. They're a, a, a football club that's been involved within this eSports scene since 2016, and they're certainly one of the football clubs that have been going about FIFA eSports the right way for so many years, have the Dutch side. The best prime example of that is the commitment they've given to a handful of their FIFA players, Ajax Danny especially, who's been playing for Ajax for a handful of years, just extended another two years in the summer just went by. There's just something about Ajax, Richard, that seem to do FIFA Esports the right way. And the question I want to I want to throw to you is, do you think Finn would have been expected to be this involved in the team? He only came through in May through the Ziggo E battle. And he's playing not just first team FIFA in the E Divise itself, but he's playing in the FGS circuit, which I think any player that comes from maybe a competition format or, or wins themselves a contract probably wouldn't have expected to do, but credit to him of how well he's just accustomed to this professional player lifestyle that he's just seemed to have picked up naturally. No, absolutely. I think the the competition uh, sort of format, he probably didn't think he'd be this involved, but age is no excuse. I mean, the majority of the best players in the world are 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, so that I don't think there's any real... We can't say, oh, a player's so young, maybe they're not ready for it. We've been playing... Finn's probably been playing FIFA at a competitive level for the past three, four years, whether that's in online cups, whether that's through tournaments in the Netherlands. He, he has been competing against the very best three division rivals, playing against players day in, day out, who now... When he matches against Oilito, he might have already had 10, 15 matches against Oilito in competitions. Regardless, he certainly has hit the ground running. And it says a lot when Ajax Danny is not in this current squad of player that we know very, very well. We've been involved in FIFA Esports pretty much for the same period of time in terms of when he came through the ranks in 2017. 
able to continue that dominance, playing in a handful of tournaments, including multiple E World Cups. He's been a multiple E Divise champion too. Currently, this is the duo Ajax have been putting forward in terms of both league as of late and this FGS Masters Cup you're watching. Currently live right now, as we said, $15,000 on the line. That could be a brilliant ball. It might get easy pick into the back for Team Hulu and Ninjas in pyjamas. It very nearly was. We approached the halfway point. On a dime, that pass. It was whipped in with a, a great right foot on that side of the pitch. Almost inch perfect as the, uh, the winger at the back post approached it. I think it was Pele coming in. And a little bit of a fumble as well. It's always a little bit tetchy at the back post when there's uh, four players on the pitch instead of just two. You don't know who's going to be receiving the ball. You don't know which indicators maybe going to be selected. It can get a little bit nervy at times. Yeah, certainly that's been talking point all season long. Half time hit. With 45 minutes left to play as it stands, it will be Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas that will be progressing into this Masters Cup final here in week two. As you can see, both players playing, no doubt, in the Ajax HQ. Changes being made for them now. A word on Levy. I mean, he's been involved in the FIFA esports scene for, for such a long time, Richard, but it sort of felt like he had his best season last year in FIFA 21. We'll speak more about that just in a second. This is the goal that Ajax did score to get the back in this one. What a finish it was from Pele. What confidence that is in... I'm going to guess that was Finney put that into the back of the net from the reaction that he's just showed there. A lovely little scoop turn ball roll. Speak about a bit of flair in your game. How about that? Well, it was needed. We didn't see a lot of that in the first leg. Ball roll, scoop turn. Maybe you're asking... I don't know if the goalkeeper got something on it and sort of pushed it higher into the top left corner, but nonetheless, doesn't no, doesn't matter how it went in. Pele with an outstanding finish. You were mentioning Levy there sort of having, I don't want to say resurgence because he's always been excellent, but it was a bit of an Indian summer really for him, wasn't it? He came out, he won the playoffs. He was, it, it was an incredible story last summer with him having that sort of, uh, that victory. But we saw it in Singapore. Um, was it cup number five, Brandon? Back in FIFA 19, where Tex came off the stage after he'd beaten him in the Xbox console final and said he was one of the toughest players that I've ever played. Like, technically, in sort of the FIFA mechanics, he was one of the best players I've ever, ever played against. That is high praise because Tex that year was by far the best player on, on, on the game. And if you go back through the ranks, if you are a hardcore FIFA esports fan, you remember him as Steren Status back in the day. So he's been involved in this esports scene for a long time. Dating back to ESWC in 2014, where he's picking up accolades for fun. This could be a brilliant start for Team Bullet in Ninjas in Pajamas. Went for that cut back into Lionel Messi. Couldn't quite find that he was looking for. But you're absolutely right, Richard. He had an unbelievable running in that tournament. Got a top two finish. It was. In that foot champions cup all the way back in March. FIFA 19, it feels like years ago. Since we had that level of match upon a land. I mean it was. <laughs> <laughs> what, two years ago? Since we since we were last out of that LAN event? I think we just had two years actually. It was uh, Paris, wasn't it? Foot Cup number four when Zazinio beat MS Tassari in the grand final chance. What a chance, look at the space, this is going to be a gift, the composure like no one else. And you can see from the direct reaction, they know what a mistake that is. It's cost them massively. It was Ronaldo that played the ball into Mbappe, I apologise. And Mbappe was never missing from there, composure like no one else. You often get in those situations as a FIFA player and you can often have too much time, but there was ice in the veins from Team Hullet. And Ninja's in pyjamas lead by three goals to one. And that moment just there, Richard, could be the moment that cost them a grand final place in this week's FGS Masters Cup. I mean, it was head in hands for Ajax. They know that they gave the ball away. It was a mistake at the back. And you give Levy or Olelito, whoever it was who kept his calm and ball roll past the goalkeeper, that time, that amount of patience on the pitch, it's always going to be a goal. The pause has come in. 
from one of these two teams looking to make the final and last change in Bappo. Building the goal scorer off the third for Team Hullet Ninja Pajamas. Cut back into Little Messi. Do not let him go on his left boot, otherwise, you will be asking for trouble. Have to see more and have to see. Level Great clinicalness ball. from my ex Esports. Oh. oh, that was the chance. It went into Pele's feet and it was just slightly too much, wasn't it, for the Brazilian forward? It was a fantastic pass cutting through the middle of the pitch. The white shirts were completely cut out of the equation, but Pele's first touch was poor. Just too heavy. When that pause does eventually come in, expect to see what you think you'll see. AK changes being made. Numbers being thrown for for Ajax as they've got literally another option. Elastico from R9 tries to bundle his way past that bat line. They stand strong again. Do the duo of Olilito and Levy de V. This is our opening semi final here in week two of the Masters Cup. That is possessed again. Wins it back nicely. R9 happily able to pull his sleeves up and get back and defend for his team. Something that you would expect me to be saying. That clock, slowly but surely, running down for Ajax. The egg time has been turned on its head, and they don't have long left to turn this game around. Fifteen minutes. First look at Ajax this year. Showed too much in that first leg. They provided the... Bit of brilliance to kick off proceedings here in leg two. They could be on the way to a 3-1 or even 4-1 deficit. They have to try and pull back when time just isn't on their side. Pele able to just take even more minutes out of this game. And you might see a different approach from Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas. 15 minutes left here in the pause menu. We'll hide that away from your eyes so you can't see the changes that will be made. On the side for, for that duo on your screen right now, Richard, surely it's a case of we've got a two-goal lead. Let's look off the possession. Let's not be silly with it. We don't really even need another goal at this point. Well, it was the substitutions that they made last game. I think it was Latan and CR7 came on, but they played them as the wingers at the left mid and the right mid. What that does, not only does it give you an offensive threat in terms of the back post cross, it, it's always on, but also defensively, as sort of crazy as this sounds, you bring in on two attackers, it gives you an out ball. It gives you a long ball. If you're in a bit of danger, if you're getting team pressed, you see Zlatan on the left wing, you just ping it up to him. He, nine times out of ten, he's always going to win the knockdown. He's always going to win the first contact. It enables you to play around him, get numbers up, and get you out of the press that Ajax are going to be implementing in this final 12 minutes. Well, then, final 13. Sure, into Jude Bellingham. As they look to take more seconds out of this game. If they score one more, it will be all she wrote. Cristiano Ooh. Ronaldo! That is all she wrote. Somehow squeezes it in the near post. Team of the year, Cristiano Ronaldo, to save the day and to send Team Hullet in Ninjas in pyjamas into their first grand final as an FGS Masters duo. Funny enough, here in the FGS Masters Cup. He might be a starter for most, but for Levy and Olilito, he comes off the bench as a super sub. Cristiano Ronaldo on that left wing, he's got everything that you want. He could be turning goal scorer into provider here. LA towards the back, Ibrahimovic of all players, they're having a good time, not once but twice. Cristiano Ronaldo will come to cause havoc for AFC Ajax. And unfortunately, they'll be crashing out in the semi-finals here in their debut as a duo in the FGS circuit. They've met their match, and they do trail by five goals to one. We did question what Team Hullet and Ninjas in Pyjamas would do. Would they sit back? Would they look to keep possession and just take time out of the game? Of course not. They're after attacking relentless FIFA, and they're on their way to a grand final in their first FGS tournament. Reverse Elastico, that's a goal back and one to remember. Unfortunately, you won't be more than the consolation. And the game just sort of played into their hands, Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas, because as Ajax put more bodies forward, as they committed more players to the cause and tried to force a way back into this game, 
the space was there to exploit. The, the opportunities to hit on the counter-attack became more and more frequent. A couple of quick goals, one from the corner, and then CR7 getting on the rebound inside the box. A really, really solid performance from Team Hulot Ninja in pyjamas. Oli Lito and Levy Dawid. There we have it. Full time here in the FGS Masters Cup. Our first semi final is in the books and it comes out as a very strong win for a very, very dangerous FIFA esports duo. Levy David and Oli Lito will win this semi final. Five goals to two. We're off for our break now. And when we're back, you'll be joined by Rachel Stringer and Manchester City's Ryan Pessoa as we tee up semi final number two. Hey guys, this is Levy again. I'm a professional FIFA esports player for the team Gullit and today I'm going to do my second masterclass about skill moves. A lot of people use the reverse elastico to dribble past the opponent, but in this case I use the reverse elastico to create space and get an easy chance on goal. I get a cutback to my center mid. Um, here I could have choose for the finesse shot, but obviously that's not a 100% chance, so I try to reach my striker. And when I reach my striker, um, most of the times I'm thinking about performing the reverse elastico. The way you perform it in this case is because I dribble upwards, you put your right stick from the left side, halfway to the right side, then it will perform you the reverse elastico. And as you can see here, uh, uh, easy chance on goal. The second skill move I want to show you guys is the Makidi cancel. In this case, I have some space with my right winger. I managed to get inside the box and I watched my opponent and as you can see he was very aggressive with the centre back. So I want to get the ball to my left winger, striker or cam because they are in a 3 versus 1 situation in this case. So I chose to do the Makidi cancel. It opens up a lot of space for my striker and my cam. Um, a very good pass into the box and unfortunately no finish but I get a pen from it. I've been Leffy, player from the team Gullit. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my second masterclass on skill moves. See you soon on the pitch. The FIFA Global Series Masters Cups are presented by PlayStation Tournament. But well, welcome back to the FGS Masters Cup week two of Monday night FIFA action with me, Rachel Stringer, and Ryan Pessoa joining me. Before the break, we saw our first semi-final team Hullet taking on uh, I actually team her that ninjas in pajamas they combined forces this year that special team we know which way it went team Hullet ninjas in pajamas 5-2 over Ajax Ryan welcome back they were so dominant they were pretty special out there why do you think that was the case tonight I think they, they started off of course, they were still tuning up, but it was a little bit shaky. I thought as if Ajax still had a, a foothold in the game, but then you saw their quality in the second leg with the goals they scored. They also resorted to, to having the aerial dominance at the back post just as an out ball when defending, which helped a lot and ended up seeing out the game for them.
Yeah, we saw it last week as well with XL. Team just having fun. I think Team Hullet Ninjas yeah. in Pajamas are doing just that as well. But Ryan, it's time now for the analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments from semi-final number one tonight of that match we just witnessed. Yes, and I briefly spoke about the goals. We'll go through all of them now in this highlights reel. Of course, Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas up against AFC Ajax. It goes from the first leg and it was around the 60th minute we saw the breakthrough here. Lionel Messi passed inside to Jude Bellingham on his left foot and it was Levy who was the person to strike that into the goal to give them the 1-0 lead. 15 minutes to go, it was from a corner. Whipped in, Ibrahimovic headed down and it was R9 Ronaldo lofted over the goalkeeper. The two goal advantage to give them that safety blanket going into the second leg. And in fact, it was another great start. Well, it was a start from AFC Ajax this time. And this was a fantastic goal. It was Pele, ball roll scoop into the top corner. There's no stopping that. I think Van der Sar might have got a hand onto that. But it was a mistake here. Ruben Diaz intercepted. Kylian Mbappe, it takes calmness, it takes composure. The ball roll around Van der Sar. And it was 3-1 for Team Hullets Ninjas in pyjamas. They needed that to give them that safety blanket I mentioned. And it was from a corner again. They played it well here. CR7 onto his left foot, a strike in at the near post to make it 4-1. And that would have been game over, but there are still some more goals. It was the last 10 minutes. It was Pele breaking through here, whipped it to the back post. Latin back across, similar to the first, or one of the first goals we saw. Save from the keeper, an open goal from CR7. And it was another goal for Team Hullet's Ninjas in pyjamas as they run through into the final. Yeah, thanks, Ryan, for that analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. And it was CR7 Team of the Year, wasn't it, with those two conclusive yeah. goals at the end there. But Ajax, a quick word on them, Ryan. Obviously, you've got the youngster Finn and obviously we've got Levy, the veteran. What, what did they really do wrong tonight? I'll be honest, I actually thought they played all right. It's really hard coming up against the, the likes of Ololito and Levy, who are fantastic. But I think they showed that they do have the talent, they do have the, the chemistry between each other. I felt as if there was that one chance they could have got back into it with Pele's touch, but it led away from the player and the keeper swept it out. But overall, I think the deserving team won. Yeah, well, the deserving team will go to the final. That's Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. Let's see who else is playing tonight and who is yet to join in. There you go. They've made it already to that final. Next up, though, we have Neo and Guild Esports. Two absolutely awesome teams. I cannot wait to get into the four players that you're going to see uh, in a little moment's time. Obviously, you've got Dullum Mike there for Neo. He's with Hensu. And then we obviously got Enrazic and Nicholas as well. Four awesome competitors emerging tonight, of course. Let's get back to Neo, though, and talk a little bit more about Dolan Mike. He is such an exceptional performer who, I'm going to say, exploded onto the scene in 2019. Let's, let's hype Dolan Mike up right now with this. Check it out. This is the first time Dolan Mike has ever gone this far in a tournament. First time he's ever gotten to the third day of a tournament. Attack after attack after attack from the German. To our nine, one more goal would finish this. Dolan Mike, congratulations. But now I won, it's just uh, feeling is better than ever before. Dolan Mike is the wonder kid out of Germany. It's the voice of an angel. <laughs> he plays the feet for, for God. This man is 9-1 up, 10-1 up. Don't score, no, 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 please. Dullan Mike is a man who has no mercy. We're going to have to call this patch the Dullan Mike patch from now on, because it is literally made for him. My name is Dolan Mike. I got the deepest voice, the longest neck, and we're getting dumped. <laughs> I'm not stopping today. I'm not stopping tomorrow. Run up the five at the back. I love that reaction from Mike Lavelle there. Dull and Mike, I can remember that tournament. Bucharest 2019, youngest ever Foot Champions Cup winner. He was phenomenal in that tournament. Ryan, I'm sure he's going to be phenomenal tonight as well. And we're seeing him pairing up, which is super special. 
Yes, it is, of course. We're seeing him dominate in 1v1 esports. Now he's competing 2v2 with a teammate as well. We can see some of the accolades on the screen. He's still only aged 19, but you mentioned the first cup he did win, the youngest champion we have seen in the FIFA Global Series era. And of course, he won the FIFA Global Series 21 Cup number two last year. And his teammate, Hensu, of course, has been competing for a number of years now, aged 23 years old. So he's got the experience behind him. And he finished top 16 in the FIFA Global Series. 2019 Xbox playoffs. So they have a fantastic team. Yeah, looking at these two players, I guess, as a team tonight, Ryan, what do you think mm -hmm. their strengths are going to be? I'd say you can tell that they've, they've played a lot behind the scenes. They're, they're part of the same team, of course, and they've had experience throughout the German infrastructure, playing against each other, maybe playing with each other, especially in the 2v2 format. So I think that will go a long way and also competing um, in many different competitions that aren't necessarily the, the FIFA Global Series, but other competitions that can give the experience, just the know-how on how to win tournaments in 1v1 and 2v2. So I think they'll, they'll be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, totally. And I was doing a bit of research on Dylan Mike earlier as well. I'm sure you guys know this now. Obviously, he's called Dylan. Do you know where the mic came from, Ryan? I actually don't. I have no idea. Can I tell you? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so his cat, his cat was called oh, Mike. <laughs> okay. His, his, okay. his nickname at school was Dylan, Dylan. And then he said, oh, what should I call the second part of it? Oh, my cat's called Mike. I'm going to add that on. <laughs> I love that story. I thought I'd just share it with everyone at home as well. Anyway, shall we move on? Enough of Rachel's cat stories. Okay, their opponents tonight, of course, are Team Guild. Um, two players in their team that I've known for a while now, N. Razik and Nicholas, two absolute superstars. Tell us a little bit more about those guys, starting with N. Razik, Ryan. Yeah, both of these players, of course, both called, well, Nicholas and Nicholas. Nicholas Razek has been also renowned as Mr. Consistent. He's always in amongst the top finalists, always on Championship Sunday, competing for the highest, um, the highest levels in tournaments. And of course, he did win his first one in FIFA 20 Cup number two. And he's just been amongst the best players, honestly. This team is formidable. They're a fantastic duo. So again, you can see some of the things he's won. Third place in the EGMZ 2020, third place FGS 21 EU qualifier, number one on Xbox. But the list is, is a lot longer than that. He's always in and amongst the best players. And of course, his teammate, I mentioned again, another Mr. Consistent, Nicholas, now competing in Europe, previously competing in South America. He is one of the best players to watch, the most composed players you will see around in the FIFA scene. Known as the Iceman, he's won so many th things. FIFA 18, playoffs winner, followed up in FIFA 19, winning playoffs again. He's also a World Cup finalist. He's won the E-Club e World Cup alongside Tex in that tournament. So he has the know-how in 2v2. So we hope he can spread that knowledge to Razek as well. Yeah, he's one of the most decorated FIFA players out there, isn't he? Yeah. And I hate that we actually never have the conversation that he's the GOAT. You know, MS Dasari, we have Tex. We never really put Nicholas in there, which I think is actually a tragedy because I think he's, yeah, he's an excellent... There. He's an excellent player. What do you think, though, Ryan, the fact that he is now over in Europe is going to, to add to his game that he maybe lacked before? I'd say in Europe, there's a lot more of practice tournaments that go on regular compared to, to in South America. You do have the fantastic level of the South American players as well at the highest level. I think in Europe, you're able to play against, again, this is no disrespect to South America, they have great players, but you're able to play against the best players in the world, in my opinion, on a consistent basis every day. So again, I think that will help a lot for him. Yeah, well, that's, of course, why Nicholas has come over here and now teamed up with N. Razik. But these two teams, again, such strong competition here. Neo taking on Guild. Brandon Smith, Richard Buckley, fierce competition once again tonight. Enjoy this one. Thank you very much, Rachel and Ryan. And yeah, I mean, what a game we've got here, Richard. Two teams that we've been waiting to commentate on for quite a long time in terms of in this FGS Masters Cup. I mean, especially for Guild Esports, Richard. Only been in the ecosystem for about two years now and they've got an unbelievable roster. Let's speak firstly about Team Neo, Richard. They previously had the likes of Tom Stokes and Gorilla on their books. Now they've got Dula Mike and, of course, uh, that uh, the teammate in Hasu this time round. Talk to you about their team that they've been rocking here tonight. We can see it's slightly different uh, because no root holly. Uh, and that's the big admission from that squad. Jude Bellingham and prime icon at moments Zidane are going to be the two central midfielders. Going forward, it's the, it's the fearsome four, I shall call it. Pele, R9, Mbappe and Messi in the back four. It's what you expect. On the other side of it, for Guild, certainly looks like a narrow because you've got three central midfielders in there. You've got Zidane, you've got Hullet, who probably plays the two central midfielders, and then Zidane 
uh, I should say Vieira as the CDM, and then your front three, CR7 getting a start, Mbappe and R9 Ronaldo. Uh, I should say Pele's actually at centre-back, so I, I'm mistaken. I would say Vieira is going to do a job at centre-back for us, and Pele is moving forward, so... Simply for chemistry reasons, that's why Pelo's at centre-back. I did miss him when the squad loaded up. I'll tell you what, Brandon. I, we've been doing this five years uh, in May. We've been commentating for free thoughts five years. I never thought I would see the day where Nicholas 99 FC is duoed up with Nicholas Razek. This is incredible. It's... I'm so <laughs> yeah. excited to watch these two play. Credit to, to, I believe it's George Hughes working behind the scenes, everyone at Guild Esports, for making that duo even happen. You've got two of the most consistent players in the world on both of their consoles, dominating their consoles over the last couple of years in terms of, you put money in Nicholas Razek, he makes an E-World Cup final. You put money in Nicholas 99, he makes an E-World Cup final. On the flip side, You've got to give credit to the two German players in Henso and Dula Mike because we are underway for game number two here in this FGS Masters Cup. Semi-final number two. However, I'm going to go against the grain, Richard. I'm looking at previous results. I'm looking at how both of these two teams have gone in a 2v2 environment. I'm swaying towards Team Neo here, just off the stats I've been seeing as of late because there's a bit more into this, a bit more storylines in terms of the national teammates. They've been playing at a national level. They've been doing superbly well in the E-Club World Cup as a duo too. And I think it's going to be an interesting game across the two legs as Guild Esports have their first real chance at goal. to save into the box and claimed eventually by Schmeichel. If there's ever a big game player though, you mentioned the previous results, you mentioned qualifiers in the past. When the lights are shining brightest, Nicholas 99 FC and Nicholas Razek just do perform. Back-to-back -back playoff champion, Nicholas Razek, multiple-time E World Cup champion. Nicholas has been there, he's done it all. He's, he's seen every single tournament that you can see. And he just seemingly gets better and better and better year on year on year. When you talk about consistency, FIFA 17 we saw him qualify for the E World Cup. He's still at the top of his game right now. Well, the only reason I've questioned Killed Esports so far is one, we haven't really been able to see them in this sort of environment. Also, the only thing I've got to back them off is their FIFA E Club World Cup results so far. They've played 18 games as a duo. They've won 10, they've lost eight back to go Mbappe with the first real chance for them in this one. Second by the Cherry, it's a lovely skill, cancel and Guild Esports. I might be talking about their not so good record in the E Club World Cup. They say, shut up, Brad, we're up by a goal to nil, 12 minutes played. Great finish as well, Can Mbappe, the goal scorer of that goal there for Guild. Early doors still for both of these two. However, Guild with their noses in front in this first leg of action. Winner of this, they'll take on Team Hullet Ninja in Pyjamas in our grand final. I think I'll be interested to get your thoughts on too, Rich. It seems as if from past tournaments and from seeing Nicholas Razek's background when he's played in the FGS online season last year, especially in Europe. I believe he's in Germany. I could be wrong, but I'm not too sure that he's next door to Nicholas 99 FC, who is now resident in London. Took the big move from flying over from Argentina to London, following the move to Guild Esports. If they're not in the same room and they're not communicating maybe next to each other, do you think that plays a part? Obviously, we can't say that now because they are currently the by a goal to nil, but as an overall factor, I think we look into, cons uh, into communication. I think we look into that as a really viable tool to be successful. Great shot, green time from R9. However, on the contrary, to sort of hit back at your point there of communication, being in the same place, in the FGS Open, in the Paris Regional, in arguably one of the most competitive regions, Maestro and Papsity won the entire thing, being in two different countries, not really speaking at all, both speaking different languages. So I think it is something that we look at, but I don't think it's the be all and end all, I'll be honest. You know, that looking to register their first real chance against this Guild Esports team. It's an interesting story, uh, story sorry, with Dula Mike and Hensu. They're both national teammates, obviously for Germany, and they did play as a duo back in December in week one of the FIFA E Nations play and I hate to point out, but unfortunately, 
They didn't have the best of results. Mbappe, let's cut it back inside. I said week one, I meant week two. They played in January. They actually got relegated. Germany got relegated from their top conference division in Europe. They only won one game. One, one, drew two, lost 11. It was not an outing to remember for the duo. And it certainly was a wake-up call because they took that form and they took it into their FIFA E Club World Cup qualifiers. As of late. They're currently number one in consistency points in Conference 1, Division 1 in Europe. So they took that performance and no doubt that teething period as a duo. And certainly they've been striving forward ever since that bad performance back in January. Just looking here, where Zidane's been mainly positioned in these squads. He's so, so good, is that prime icon moment, Zidane. In the middle of the park, he, he can Zidane. just control it, he can tick it over. So comfortable. Pele. Skill cancel into the finish nearly from Pele. How good has that been? From both the Argentine and the German. I mean, I have to say, for a long time, when we knew 2v2 esports was coming, Richard, Nicholas Razek, we know, signed for, for Guild the year before that, in the year of 2020. And for a long time, we were saying, who's going to be the teammate? Who's going to be that PlayStation player? Ball into the box, cleared away by Zidane Zidane as we speak of the player. And I'll be honest, I don't think I expected it to be Nicholas. Well, there was no, there was no reason why we should have been looking at Nicholas. Like he seemed almost out of the picture. He didn't seem like an obvious, obvious player. But he, he committed to coming to Europe. Chance here for oh, wow. Neo. Great save. Well, I think the reason that we, we questioned the move is he had a long, long, long period of FC Basel, the Swiss side, did Nicholas, and I'm sure there was a lot of, obviously, loyalty towards the Swiss club. And it would have had to take a serious offer. And I mean, an opportunity of a lifetime, no offence, to move to London. To completely reshape and change your life. To move over to Europe as a region in general. To be involved in more European-esque opportunities as a FIFA player. Something that not only he has done, but one of his good friends in, Matthias Bernardo, a fellow Argentine, has also done moving across to Spain. As we're at half-time here between the two teams. Not too much to say in possession, but the scoreline... In this FGS Masters Cup second semi-final, it is the duo of Guild Esports to lead Neo by a goal to nil. I've just been analysing a little bit of the formations. The the four one two one two narrow against the four three two one is the two formations of choice here for Neo and Guild. We're going to have a look back at the opening goal of this game for Guild Esports. It was a beautiful play into Mbappe. Slight. The rebound inside the box, but when the ball fell back to him, the composure just to turn it around, sent a defender packing, and that was the reaction from Nicholas Razek, which put them 1 0 up. And you can just see in the background there, Nicholas Razek, trophy after trophy. He's been a, a for Champions Cup winner. A multiple time German champion, FIFA E World Cup finalist, seemingly year after it. Some would say Mr. Consistent in the German field that is just so full of talent. As they look to get their second of the game, it's a heavy touch from Hakimi that very nearly would have put his goalkeeper into no man's land. He gives out a corner instead. It's an awful touch from the Moroccan fullback. It's Team Neo find themselves on the back foot just four minutes after the restart. Remember, winner of this plays in the Masters Cup final against. Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas. Ronaldo just over the bar there. Whatever. It's time green, and when it's time green, you never know where it's going to end up. I should say, speaking of prime icon moments, Richard, have they impressed you so far? I mean, it's usual that we see the likes of Pele and R9, but in a sort of new build, a new body of a a prime icon moment just gives them that extra 10 15 percent that i know pros no doubt will notice when they go back to their normal ultimate team accounts and they can they can tell the slight difference i mean it just makes so many more icons viable the prime icon moments viera coming in 
um, into the squads, whether it's at centre back or in midfield, the likes of Puskas with the skill move and weak foot upgrades that he has picked up in his Prem Icon moment coming off the bench. CR7 is non existent in the squads now because Mbappe is too quick, too good to be in the teams. I mean, CR7 is sort of personal preference if he's involved in the squads, but typically it's Pele, R9, Messi, and Mbappe. Nicely done from Guild Esports. Had the breakthrough over just 13 minutes. It was Mbappe that got the goal. It could be on for a second. Ronaldo. More leap up. Unfortunately, trouble Schmeichel too much though. To see more from the German duo. And to Andulamaik. Andulamaik, one of the youngest for Champions Cup winners on paper. Chance. Bellingham. Dedan. Pele. Khan and Lastico will reverse Lastico himself. In and around the box. Of meets the arch enemy on Marquinhos and then eventually Hakimi. Who you seems see, to be staples. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, there's no doubt that they'll be in squads for the foreseeable future. Um, you see CR7's positioning there, Brandon. It's something that I think we're going to see more of. Him deployed to centre mid. There's a sort of... <laughs> arriving late box-to-box -box midfielder when you've got so much talent at your fingertips it's hard to pick an 11 and sometimes you, you're forcing players into positions that they typically wouldn't play but as a centre mid as a wide midfielder as a wide cam I think he, he does tick a lot of boxes for you Cristiano seemingly it's always been the case that maybe you start in a a different formation, they move into a 4 4 2 in game. It's a case of squeezing and attacking players! Posted in on nine! It's a smash and grab effort from Team Neo. They've needed something so far in this game. And the man to save them is no one else than Ronaldo Nazario on the stroke of the 72nd minute game on here in the FGS Masters Cup. It was a little bit scrappy, but. They worked the ball from out wide through the three midfielders that they have, the three central midfielders in the 4-3-2-1. From left to right, they found its way to Arnai Ronaldo. I think the ball bounced nicely for him inside the box, and he's always going to put it away. Even the, the save, he was at full stretch, the goalkeeper, couldn't quite get there. I think he did go in off the post. Great goal from R9 when the chance came to him. Game on now with, what did we have, 73 minutes on the clock, was it? 74 minutes, about 15 minutes left to play in our first leg of action. We're going to be all eyes on the second leg between Neo and Guild here. Yeah, well, let's be honest, they've needed something, haven't they, Richard? Because they haven't offered too much so far in this game, have the German duo, who I was just calling out how good they've been in terms of recent E-Club World Cup action, uh, Process has only reached, just got going again. Obviously, in the build up to get to the E Club World Cup finals, a competition that Nicholas 99 knows so well. He is a champion of that tournament back in 2019. Obviously, at the time, he was part of another incredible player in Tex. Years on. That pattern continues, this time with Nicholas Razik as they look to build forward for their 2 1 lead. When, when this team was put together with Nicholas Razek and Nicholas 99 FC, a lot of questions were about will they mesh together, how will they play together, and I think you look at that tournament that you just mentioned there, the Club World Cup, King Esports 2019, Brandon, there was, there's question marks about that. These are the two best players on their representative consoles. Will they mesh together as a team? And they went on to win the tournament. But Nicholas is hey, so well, good at adapting. Ball. Eusebio. Oh, got a score. Have to score. What a chance that was for Team Neo. It came just off a, a breakdown on possession. One ball over the top. And very nearly. Team Neo completely flipped this game on its head. Puskas. On to 
Change things up, we'll continue your point in just a second, Rich, as this attack might just break down. Six minutes left to play. Remember, there's a second leg to come up after this game. We might be going in even Stevens, or there might be late drama. Guild now, brilliant ball, R9, oh it's all oh, my day, Jao Cancelo, where did that come off? He's offside, oh, he's offside. anyway. <laughs> just, just offside, still, he didn't know it as he blocked it over the line there. Just going back to the chance previous for Neo, they have to score, they have to set themselves up. Go into the second leg with a 2-1 lead, it's a one-on-one, -on -one. it's a prime real estate chance. Doesn't get much better than that and just couldn't beat the goalkeeper. Went for the near post. I think he probably tried baiting him, hoping there was a little bit of goalkeeper movement and then sneaking it in. Was unable to do so. Tello just about keeping that one in. Is there going to be time for one more chance? I don't think there will be. Well won by Kante. And it goes. Halfway point in semi-final two. It's even Stevens, quite literally. After a promising start from Guild Esports, just 13 minutes in with Mbappe. It was cancelled out down the other end. The halfway point here in this FGS Masters Cup semi-final. It's Team Neo 1, Guild Esports 1. When we get back for the break, we'll find out who's joining Team Hullet and Ninjas in Pyjamas in our grand final. What's going on, guys? Ulelito here, I'm back. Now, in this Messi class, I will be showing you the attacking abilities that comes with the 4-5-1 second variation. We're starting with the wing here. We're getting the ball into the middle and we have the ball with our right CM and then turning it on to our central CM. And as you see here, we have the perfect triangle. So if I were to pass it to my left CM here, I can go for a direct pass to my other CM again because I have this triangle and the sentiment that he is selecting, he can't do anything because he can't put put pressure when he basically is defending as three midfielders in the middle. The thing I do here though, with my central center mid, I'm passing it to my left center mid. And as I showed you on the tactics before, my left center mid is always unbalanced. And why? That's because I want him to make a run in behind to be able to maybe get the ball in a later stage of the attack. And the thing that happens then is that I'm doing an L1 pass with my left center mid, which makes him create a run in behind afterwards. And we find the pass back to our center center mid, as you see here, finding it to the right center mid. The thing that happens here is that I see that my striker is in the middle. And why is he? Yeah, because I used him on stay central in my instructions. So he's staying central, he is the target man. I found my left center mid and he's almost scoring because of it. Thank you so much for watching my masterclass. I appreciate that a lot. And yeah, see you on the pitch. Welcome back to the FGS Masters Cup. You join us in week two, but remember, we're doing this every single Monday in March. Next week, here's this for a teaser for you. Ducks Gaming will take 
on Heretics and Team Akers, as we know, will be playing against Falcons. MS Dasari, I repeat, MS Dasari is in town next Monday. Get in your diaries the 21st of March. But Richard, there's more to come, isn't there? We'll get your thoughts this in just a second. The Team of the Season Cup kicks off on April 29th until May 1st. We are back in 2v2 environments. I can't wait for it. How about you, Richard? I mean, look, we, we're sort of getting a tease. We, we, we're being teased into it. We're seeing four different FGS squads, FGS Masters teams week by week, and then we're going to see them all together alongside the 16 winners from the FGS Open. I simply cannot wait for the Team of the Season Cup at the end of April. Well, without any further ado, we're back underway in this game. Two of the teams that will be there in April in the FGS Team of the Season Cup, obviously in sync with the promo Team of the Season, which who knows what items might work their way into a handful of those teams when it does break down over those three days later this year. You join us at the halfway mark where Guild Esports take on Team Neo in semi-final number two in the FGS Masters Cup. Only one of these two can book a spot in the grand final tonight against Team Hullets and Ninjas in Pyjamas newest creation for FIFA Esports team and a duo that packs a punch in Oli Lito and Levy David back on the way as Guild Esports looks like the first real chance in this game they're kicking from left to right in that green strip so far team Neo able to just deal with that first piece of pressure just six minutes I mean, what did you make of the first leg Richard overall because it was an energetic start from Guild Esports but over a period of time Neo found their feet and they're able to find a goal back in the game yeah, it, it was it was quite an end-to-end -end game, really. There wasn't a lot of real clear-cut chances in the final third, but I think the the general flow and the the general play between both sides was really entertaining. I think if you're a neutral, you're probably sitting back and you you got your feet up. You're enjoying this game a lot because neither team looked perfect, and I think that is what is so so entertaining to watch. Well, Neo. Their first sniff in the box of Guild Esports is going to fall to an Mbappe. Chance doesn't last too long. Bellingham gets the ball back for Zidane. And they look to recycle again. Sleep, Dylan, Mike and Hensu, the two German players. Zidane, brilliant save, Schmeichel. It's the first real chance they've had in this one. And it's a warning shot fired from that prime icon moment, Zinedine Zidane. Who is it just you? Typical midfielder, he can get forward and can cause havoc. Into the box it will go, Ruben Diaz. Will give Schmeichel quite an easy day in the office there. Into his hands. And not much more than that, 15 minutes play. It's a nice corner actually, whipped into the near post. They brought the goalkeeper out but then didn't fully commit with it. So, I wouldn't say a free header, but a, a nice header opportunity at the near post for Ruben Diaz. Couldn't quite get the power or the trajectory to send it over the top of Schmeichel. But early pressure from Neo as they win the ball back again comfortably in their defensive third and can now progress higher up the pitch. It's that one of Mbappe. That's what Tease. What a ball. Mbappe could be through. Look for a cut, but goes on his own. Killing Mbappe. Says, I don't need anyone else in that moment. And Neo will take the lead. 21 minutes on the clock. They lead on the aggregate scoreline. Two goals to one. And it's the perfect start for the German duo. What a pass that was. Just lofted in behind, over the top of the fullback's head. It bounced perfectly for Mbappe to hit on the half volley over the goalkeeper. Nothing he can do about it at all. And pressure for the first time over these two legs, really on Guild right now as Neo take the lead for the first time. It's quite an ambitious effort, wasn't it, from Mbappe? It looked like it was going to be a bit too tight for the Parisian forward. That could be enough one of those lofted balls that they have been teasing. They've got to be on the ball a bit more, Guild Esports, because it's not just been the first time they've been caught out on that. Pelle had half a chance in the first leg in that exact sort of moment. See the intensity. go up a notch remember winners of tonight will get $15,000 that's our grand final that will come up following this one only four teams take place here on 
Monday night FIFA as that finesse comes in. All right by Schmeichel. The third play, we've got to see a bit more from Guild now. Is this going to be their first real chance? Oh, no, no, it's pitch perfect. What a tackle. What a tackle. He's oh. won the ball. You thought he did. Oh. Yeah, I thought he did. I thought he slid across. Pele with a golden chance for Guild Esports. We're back all square. But the build-up before the penalty was pitch perfect from Guild. But that looked like a very, very harsh decision from the referee there. It was a nice pass, it was weighted nicely. I think it's going to be a goal if he doesn't go to ground, but I think I, I do think he's a little bit harsh there, given the penalty and the yellow card. He, he slid in from behind, that can be the only thing really, that he's, he slid sort of on the angle and gone maybe man first. We only get to see one shot of it, but I'm sure if you, you slow it down in the instant replay, you might see multiple different angles of it and see the, the player get taken out first. Chance there for Neil doesn't fall to anything. Well, it's what this game is needed, a bit of end-to-end -end drama. This is your first taste of FGS FIFA. There's a lot more 2v2 FIFA to come over the next few months, including, as we said, the FGS Master Cup, the FGS Team of the Season Cup in April plus a number of domestic leagues all around the world that do follow this format. Look to sort of conclude over the next coming months. That's a bit of an interesting pass there. From <laughs> Zinedine to now, and he's... Red time shot. He's had quite the influence in the game so far. Short pass, it wasn't good. Neo with numbers. Watch out for Messi. R9 goes on his own. Pass one, two, three. Finds Messi. Good finesse on his left. Doesn't bother. Deflected towards the back post. And Amal be there. Easy pickings. R9. I'm not sure how Zidane made that ball go back across the box. He red timed his header, but just did enough to put the pressure on the defender. And you never give R9 a sniff in the box because you know he's going to punish you. Scrappy. Very, very scrappy. It was floated to the back post. Zidane has somehow managed to get the ball back into a dangerous area. Ardine's going to finish it all day long, but yeah, it's it's a tough, tough goal to to concede. If you guild esports, it's a great goal to score. If you are Neo and you'll not be complaining one bit about it. They're, they're good value for money though. They've they've been the better side. They've got double the XG than their opponents at half time. We're going to see some of the best moments of that first half very shortly indeed. But I, I do think Neo have slightly edged it with 45 minutes left to play here in this FGS Masters Cup game number two. This was the, the goal. You just see the foul there. And maybe I think it just goes through the man first. And he steps up to the penalty spot and it's an easy finish with Pele. I think just from that, Nicholas 99 FC was the penalty taker. And this was the header, so just have a look as this ball gets floated into the back post. It took a deflection. I think he's got to head it out, then it bounced off the side of Zidane's head. Very, very scrappy goal. But he will take it all day long, will Neo? They lead three goals to two. Yeah, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? Zidane, Zidane sort of just did enough to put pressure on the fullback, which I think was Jao Cancelo in that exact moment. However, This is the scenario right now. Team Neo lead by three goals to two on aggregate. They are on their way to a grand final. If they can hold on, but trust me, it's going to be a long 45 minutes, this, of chances at either end. Although they didn't offer much guild in that first 45, that one time they did go forward and win the penalty, it was total football. We're going to see that again. Ball switched out nicely. Will it find Hakimi? That is it down. Where were these green shirts now? Start to queue up on the edge of the box. Sedan. Seeming like the more we speak about it, the more he pops up on the pitch and continues to play his part in this story. He partners alongside Jude Bellingham. 
on one side of the pitch. On the other side, it's more of the icon, icon traditional duo. Ball round the corner, finds R9, cut back, beautiful! Oh, no, Mbappe just fluffed his lines on the finish. Huge chance. And if there's one player that you expect it to fall to, it probably would be killing Mbappe. Chance here for the other Mbappe at the other end, looking for the roulette into the left-footed finesse shot. I do think... Just scoring a goal like that, Brandon, and sort of a scrappy goal, the the best way to say it, the best way to put it, it can deflate you. More than just conceding a goal, if you concede that, you, you're thinking, wow, it's really not our day, is it? Ah, look, it's just not in at the moment. It's another big win. They can find a second, it will cause even more problems. Nicholas, 99, and M. Razek. Tell you what, though, speak about the speed of that build up from Neo. It was brilliant. FIFA just couldn't find the finish with Mbappe. Great ball. Loving these little dink balls around the corner, aren't they? They're catching the fullback out every single time. Vieira was, was left a little bit. A little bit for dust there down this left hand side. He did well just to get back involved. I'd be interested to see if him being deployed as a centre back, if that has a knock on effect, if more people try it, if more people are open to the idea of Pravac or being introduced as that secondary centre back next to Team Lee and Marquinhos. Potentially, Matt Pravac or Moments Maldini could be the player involved as well. Little on now. one. Look at what they can do. They do trial by a goal. They need a goal. R9 oh, is the onside. Yes, he is. Deflection will fall kindly back to Mbappe. Ronaldo's feet. La Croqueta nicely. Zidane! It's a great save from Schmeichel. And it seems like the man of the evening is Zidane Zidane. He's popping up everywhere on the pitch. And what a chance it was for Guild. A brilliant, brilliant save from Schmeichel to keep him out and to keep Neo in the lead. Two quick things. Firstly, you have to score. Yeah, like it, it, It's one of those chances that you have to score. But also, I don't know if you saw it, there was a rogue slide tackle in there. Uh, and I think it just disrupted the motion of Zidane a little bit as he went to take the shot. But I also thought it could have been a penalty, you know, inside the box. Either way, they've got away with a... A bit of a lifeline have team Neo. Absolutely, what chance it was for any player to be in that position. Icon, prime icon moment, team of the year, anyone. Inches away from, from just putting the ball in the back of the net. It looks so easy, it really wasn't. Supposedly. Expect changes, here they come. Messi on for Zidane for Guild Esports. And Ronaldo on for Pele and Hullet too. Is it a triple change from Neo? No, it's just the two. Schmeichel showing his aerial presence there as he pinches the ball off the head of the Dutch midfielder. I wonder what else was changing that pause from Guild Esports. Was there a different game plan teed up? It's just the intensity of their play. They just need to press probably a little bit higher up the pitch. A great win there from Hakimi, but just winning those... 50-50 passes, winning those balls down the line that Neo, you mentioned it earlier, just clipping them down the line and getting that space and getting that pressure alleviated. They have to make more of an effort to stop those passes. Ronaldo can't pickpocket Hakimi. Neo will come forward. They've got numbers. Mbappé out on the right. It's a Is lovely it? lofted ball into Eusebio. We can send Neo into a grand final. Somehow. With Schmeichel and Vieira and a deflection that apparently came back off Eusebio. You would have got away with that. It was a fumble inside the box there. Eusebio just, the ball seemingly didn't drop for him. It was in the sky, it was bouncing, it was bouncing and it just didn't fall nicely for him. Vieira, Schmeichel, 
combining just enough to put the Portuguese icon off. Guild on the hunt for an equaliser. In it goes! The error of all people! Who's made a dying run forwards? Or alternatively, he's just been put forward for the last 15 minutes in this game. Patrick Vieira may have just maybe come and saved the day for Guild Esports in the 82nd minute. We're eight minutes away from extra time here in the FTS Masters Cup. He's been playing centre-back all game. And he just pops up at the back post. They sent him forward on a run. They selected it. It's Nicholas 99 FC crossing it to Nicholas Razek. Powerful header from Vieira. Not a thing the goalkeeper can do about it. An extra time is well and truly on the cards. Well, well, well. Of all the goal scorers, Richard, it's that man that pops up to save the day. Vieira, what's the reaction like on the other side for Team Neo? It's no doubt not the greatest. They know that they were just eight minutes away, Richard, from getting out of this game. I mean, you look at the chances that they did survive. The, what, the chance that was six yards out that Schmeichel saved. There's been a couple of big moments in the game where you'd thought Guild would have scored. And also the Isabio chance that they had that they should have scored just minutes ago. Neo probably will look back on this game if they, it does go against them and they do fall out of the tournament and think, yeah, we really should have wrapped that up. We really should have sealed this tie. Well done. Is there one more twist to this tail in normal time? Messi. Finds Bellingham. Five minutes plus additional time. This is nice. Isabio twisting, oh. turning. Oh, no. Red timing it off the pitch and possession back to Gill. They'll get the last chance now. Three minutes for Gill to pull something out of the fire, to pull a stoke out of the fire. Well, they're less late for an equaliser. He looked, he, looked, he looked finished. Are we after extra time here in the FGS Masters Cup? Remember, winner of this plays Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas. One chance. The grand final. A minute of added time. It's a lofted ball forward. 30 more minutes needed to separate these two, Richard. And there's a lot more left to unfold in this tail. Still so narrow there in the match, that to half time. Oh, sorry, at full time, I should say. But the big story, Patrick Vieira coming to save the day in the 82nd minute. He flew forward from centre-back. He popped up at the back post and guided his header for Guild past the goalkeeper into the top corner. And we go into extra time here in the FGS Masters Cup Week 2. If you're enjoying any of the action, this is only a taste of it. This is only the starter because the team of the season cup will be your main course and dessert. The end of April, where both of these two sides will be there and potentially even matching up. You never know. Yeah, the best part of that, Richard, 32 teams will be there, won't they? Battling over a handful of days between the 29th of April and the 1st of May. Get in your diaries, that team of the season cup. However, as Richard Ruckley rightly said, we have got starters coming every Monday night from 6 p.m. British summer time. We're only halfway through this. There's still a lot more of this story to unfold. 30 minutes left here. When it goes into a final worth $15,000. Six goals between the two. And there's nothing to separate them after 180 minutes. Let's see. And extra time chooses to play out Bellingham. The Guild Esports chance. Mbappe on his own. He had a bit too much time there. Went for the fake shot. Looked to open up just an angle against Schmeichel, but still the Great Dane stood strong. He, even though it was so close, to the goal the angle was so acute and so tight he had to try and pull out a skill move just to open up a, a little bit more of a shooting opportunity because if he just hits it near post as soon as it falls to him it's going to be safe no matter what so I, I like the skill move I like trying to open up the space but again it was just too tight Neo's turn 
to attempt to find a way through the the wall of green shirts to the bat no way through that time as you can imagine on both sides of the pitch the fence is pretty much the same Jao Cancelo, Ruben Diaz, Marquinhos and Akiwi make a formidable back four that we're seeing game after game and there's no reason why you won't see them maybe the odd addition of Vieira coming into the mix well, one of those centre backs, probably Ruben Diaz. Cut back. Ronaldo finds Mbappe. He's killed. I'm shocked. How has that been dragged wide? Gilder on top. Gilder in. Control of this game at the minute. They're winning every 50-50. They're every. They're winning every second ball. But they just can't get there. Those are back in front. Switch of play, watch out on that far hand side, potentially Cy Bellingham. Absolutely right, the first 15 minutes has been all Guild Esports. This is what they'll be over the moon of seeing so far. Ronaldo, they're in the dangerous area again. Messi once and twice, can't bundle his way through half time here. And we're only 15 minutes away for a possible penalty shootout, Richard Buckley. And Guild will be disappointed with that first 15 minutes. Not because they've, they've not played well. They have played well, but they've got nothing to show for it. Yes, they've got stats. Yes, they've had chances. But if the ball's not in the back of the net, all that good play and all those good statistics and that XG being improved means nothing. If your ball is not finding the way into the back of the net, it just builds frustration, to be honest, because you feel as though you're on top. You feel as though you should be winning, but the scoreline doesn't replicate it. Many words said between Tom and Mike and Ensu. There's the stats at half time. It's 50 50 here with 15 minutes left to play. Remember, winner goes into the grand final here in the FGS Masters Cup. Still nothing to separate the two teams after 200. Near enough, FIFA minutes. And another pause comes in just two minutes after the restart. Again, we won't show you what is being changed at home, just to give the respect to both teams there. But pause straight away. I think that's one thing that I do find interesting, Rich, in, in the duos, is who takes that lead, isn't it? Who takes the lead to make the pauses, to make those substitutions? I think when these duos, as we'll know in this FGS sort of circuit, will be playing so much FIFA, they won't even need to have a conversation. It'll be muscle memory. This is the change we make when we're losing. These are the players that we bring on. And it will just be as simple as that for a lot of these teams. Yeah, it, it won't necessarily be one player sort of making the decisions. It'll be one player inputting those decisions. So I imagine there'll be conversations that, just look, I'm going to make a poll. Should we sub this? I'm going to change this. But the biggest thing for me, which one player has to and has to take control over, typically it would be the red or the uh, yellow icon, is the goalkeeper movement. And also the offside traps. When to when you're going to play those quick tactics, they're the ones that so-called the captain of the team has to be responsible for. Final ten minutes here. You would have looked the better of the two teams since we went into extra time. And their golden chance, Mbappe, that looked to be the golden chance. Flash wide. Have team Neo. Got that little dink ball in their back pocket again. They come forward this time, Eusebio. Ball rolls and manoeuvres his way around the box. Hullet completely misses it. They'll be crying out saying, why on earth are you not locked onto that? Penalties looming. It's a tough way to go. Especially. Especially with four players as well, all taking penalties, all saving penalties. And also, the extra pressure, Richard, of big cash on the line. Here's Chance. Mbappe for Guild Esports. Ooh. They win. They never win anything. It comes off the shin pad of Mbappe. Possession changes hands again. Final minute. Plus additional time. And then we're on our way to a penalty shootout. One minute. That's all Neo I've got. 
Ronaldo. Pull it. Oh. That would have been a late chance there. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gents. Penalty shootout for a grand final spot. And up steps Guild Esports first with Puskas. Which way will Puskas go? Saves! A brilliant start for Team Neo. But can they match this up with their sub in Yusebio? Of course they can. Delicate little Penenka down the middle. CR7 now stepping up for Guild Esports. They scored a penalty in the game and now they score one in the shootout. Neo looking to keep in front here with Lionel Messi straight down the middle. Two for two, Team Neo. Two penalties down the middle. Mbappe must score this one. He does. He goes down the middle. He says, why not? And Mbappe on the flip side for Team Neo to make it three from three. Keeping their composure so far. Uh, team Neo, Rude Hullet from 12 yards out, steps up, slots it down the middle again. We're seeing a pattern start to form here. CR7 for Neo, saved, sudden death. Well, 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 game on Messi for Guild, scores. It's as simple as this, Team Neo have to score. If they don't, they do get knocked out. Up steps Hullet, it's saved, Guild Esports progress into the FGS Masters Cup Grand Final. They started so well, did Neo, and then they just fell off towards the end of the shootout. Guild came back, they came back strong, missed their first one, then scored the next four, and they will set up an enthralling final with Ninja Pajamas. And, oh, Brandon, what a game. And how many times, how many times do we say about the fine margins in FIFA Esports? Look no further than that one. A six goal thriller ended in a penalty shootout. Neo crash out and Guild Esports make it through to the FGS Masters finals. We'll be back after a quick break with Rachel Stringer and Man City's Ryan Pessoa. Hey guys, my name is Max. I'm a professional FIFA player for Complexity Gaming and today I'm going to teach you how to use the 4 1 2 and 2 narrow second variation. So for our first pattern here, we're going to be looking at how we use fullbacks to create space when attacking. Once we win the ball back, the first thing that I do is I trigger my fullback on a run manually. So now you see my fullback at the top of the screen. He's running down the right side and so is my striker. That leaves two attackers down the right side and he only has one left back. Once I recognize this, I have the ball with my center mid and we just play the ball. Now here in this position, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five guys running starting into the box and he has five defenders that can cope with it. So I look into the box, I see there's no one there initially, so I have to recycle the play and go backwards. An open pass comes back, my center mid drops back, and then we're gonna just keep passing. There's, there's an open guy almost always in the narrow around the box. As we mentioned earlier, we got tackled, but the key thing is that we managed to advance the ball into his box off of like a five second attack. Hey guys, thank you for watching my 4-1-2-1-2 masterclass video. See you on the pitch.
FIFA Global Series Masters Cups are presented by PlayStation Tournaments. guys are enjoying tonight's FGS Masters Cup Week 2. Make sure you check out the FIFA Global Series on social media as well. We're on all social media channels, of course, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. And use the hashtag, hashtag FGS22 to join in the conversation. Actually, we're going to ask you a bit more about that in a short while. We've got a poll running shortly for you as well. Hello, welcome back to week two of the FGS Masters Cup. Rachel Stringer here, alongside me is Man City FIFA Pro, Ryan Pessoa. What have we just seen in semi-final two? Wow, Neo taking on Guild. We had penalty in game, we had extra time, then we had a penalty shootout to decide it all. Ryan Pessoa, heartbreakingly close there. Guild are going through. Neo must be furious. Yeah, I think they'll be devastated. I felt as if they, they'd done what they thought they needed to do in the second leg. But Gil turned it around. They played really, really well to get back into it. And then the penalty shootout is always a coin toss, but they came out on top. They did indeed. That's probably the experience of their two players. We'll get into that in more detail in a short while. But for now, Ryan Pessoa, it's over to you with this. The analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments from that semi-final number two. Yes, of course, we're going to go through the highlights between these two fantastic teams. A lot of goals, and of course, it did lead to the penalty shootouts, but it, of course, was Nicholas Razek and Nicholas representing Guild, and they started off brightly in the first leg. It was a Black Rocket cancelled pass into Mbappe. Quick, swift turning, sending the defender on his left foot into the corner to give them the one goal lead. And there was a response though. In the first leg, it was Neo with Dullamag and Hensu bouncing back. A slice of fortune, but the finish was fantastic from R9 Ronaldo. First time arrowed into the corner, off the post and in. We go into the second leg and this completed the turnaround from Neo. Breaking through the Mbappe with the run. A ball over the top, fantastically done. And it was Mbappe who slams it in at the near post past the goalkeeper. You could argue the keeper could do better, but it gave them the lead. And it was a similar fantastic ball into R9. A quick turn, Mbappe. And I know Richard and Brandon thought this was a clean tackle. You could argue it was. I was surprised it was given as a penalty, but Guild took the chance as it came straight down the middle from Pele. And it was two goals apiece. And this it was going into the second half. Just in the brink of the second half, sorry, it was a slice of fortune, a cleared header off Zidane's head, falls to R9 with a simple header. 3-2, Neo are leading. You thought they'd done enough. It was the dying embers of the game. R9 Ronaldo across, and it was Patrick Vieira launched up from center back with a green times header. And it gave them the equalizer, 3-3, go into extra time where we saw Guild take control. I thought they would have done enough to break through the reverse Elastico. Goals wide from Mbappe. I thought that would have been the chance there to break through if there was going to be a goal in extra time, but we're going to penalties and this was the decisive moment. Guild were losing on penalties. Neos with the advantage. And it was a save from Guild, a goal as well from Lionel Messi. And it was the vital save there, the last penalty kick. Rude Hullet saved from Peter Schmeichel and it allows Guild Esports with both Nicholas's to advance into the final. Well, Ryan, Thank you. That was quite the analysis presented by PlayStation Tournament. You had to cover everything that could be possibly be covered in a FIFA match there. So well done for taking us through that one. But that was, I think, something a little bit special. I mean, Guild obviously yeah. going through, went down. Do you think, I think Richard Buckley was saying they had the narrower formation. Do you think that played into their hands a little bit and, and was a reason they went through in the end? I think it helped them with link-up play. They were creating little triangles quicker, passing more, and they were in sequence with one another, creating a lot of chances. And I felt as if that formation helped them create a lot more chances to get the equaliser, especially against Neo, who were defending really well, I thought, up until that moment. Yeah, it was a Vieira, didn't it, who just ruined it for Neo there. I'm sure they'll be having words with him a little bit later on. Let's uh, go atten attend our attention, sorry, to the final then. And the bracket from tonight. Obviously, we played two semi finals already. Ryan, you can say with me from this we had Team Hullet Ninjas in pajamas earlier. They got the job done, didn't they? Over Team Ajax there. They go through. And then it was Neo taking on Guild. We thought it looked like Neo for most of that match. And then Guild got it, didn't they? On penalties. Like they said, they went down firstly. They didn't get that first penalty in, but then came out victorious in the end. So that 
is our end of the road the, it, in terms of final Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas taking on Guild there. So that's the final tonight, guys. Um, Ryan, did you did you possibly expect those two teams? I'm going to say Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas, slightly younger faces, kind of came out online over the last couple of years. And then we've got Guild, Enrazic and Nicholas, slightly older. Been around the scene for quite a few years now, going up against each other. It's going to be an exciting one. Yeah, I've been eagerly anticipating, um, ready to watch Guild compete because, of course, we mentioned both Nicholas and how well they played in a 1v1 format. But 2v2, you'd expect them to perhaps continue in that same vein. And they have done so far. They've showed with um, little glimmers of of the, the intricacies they have in the box, whether it's just linking up the skill moves, the shot cancels, and they just perform fantastically well in that front. But I feel a bit bad for Neo. I thought they performed really, really well. Um, they did have a, a little bit of fortune on their side and against them, and that leveled out. So you could argue that Guild deserved to go through to the final. Yeah, it's always really frustrating, isn't it, to go out on penalties, of course. We asked you this last week, and we ask you again now, who are you predicting to become our week two champions? Okay. Interesting, at the moment, Guild 59% there to Team Hullet Ninjas in Pajamas 41%. Guys at home, I'm gonna say, you got it wrong last time. I believe you said Team Fnatic were about 75% certain to win. What happened? Oh yeah, Team XL, they came out on top, didn't they? So think carefully about who you're saying is going to win. Ryan, would you, would you back the fans at the moment and agree with them that Guild are, are gonna come out on top tonight? I'm actually going to go with the crowd again this time. I actually think Guild, from what I saw in the first half, I'd say it was attacking wise, they were unbelievable. But again, you can't really rule out Team Hullet and Ninja Pajamas either. They're both fantastic players. They played really, really well. But it, I, I don't know. I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm going to solidify my choice. I'm going to go with Team Hullet. No, no, sorry, what am I talking about? I'm going to go with um, Guild Esports to win this You're one. You're going with Guild. Yeah. <laughs> Let's remind ourselves, though, because it was quite a while ago now. It was semi-final one, of course. Ninjas in pyjamas. Team Hullet. Let's see how they made it to today's final. Here are the highlights. Ryan, let's have a quick look back at these. Yes, of course. We're going to look at the highlights and their goals from their matchup earlier on up against AFC Ajax. And they started off brightly. It was Lionel Messi into Jude Bellingham. It was Levy David with a shot on Jude Bellingham's left foot to give them the one goal lead and give them the confidence to, to try and push on and reach the final. And it was a Jao Cancelo cross and Ibra header down and an R9 shot which lofted just over the, on or the, the stretching keeper to get into that bottom corner. In the second leg though, they did concede, or sorry, they, they scored a, a goal here from a mistake from Ruben Diaz. It was calm, it was composed, it was a ball roll around the goalkeeper and it was killing Mbappe to give them the 3-1 lead at that moment. And then it was a, an element towards the end of the game where they're keeping possession, they had a corner and it was R9, or sorry, CR7 in at the near post on his weaker foot above the goalkeeper, roof of the net to give them the 4-1 lead and to put the nail in the coffin if it wasn't in there already. It was Pele and similarly to the goal before, crossed in Ibra back across goal. Great save from Van der Sar, but it was an open goal for CR7 and he makes no mistake, giving them the 5-1 lead and putting them into the final. Yeah, exactly. Well, Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas, go up against Guild. Ryan, my final question. Obviously, our first team, Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas, do have a coach. They're in the same room. It's on the contrary to what Guild are doing. They're in separate locations. Does that play into it a little bit? Now you said that, I'm actually, I feel like changing my prediction. I actually feel like having no, or being you in can't. the same... <laughs> yeah, it's too late now. But I feel like being in the same same um, room as each other competing helps a lot, whether it's from a morale perspective or just being able to... Just being around someone. If someone makes a mistake, you can... Of course, you can do it over the internet as well, by the use of headsets. But just being in and around each other, having a coach right behind you helps a lot. And I feel like that could make the difference, in all honesty. Yeah, totally. Well, Ryan's now on the fence. We're going to ask yeah. Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley which way they are going to lean towards for this final because it is time to find out our week two FGS Masters Cup champion and join XL from week one. Guys, which way are you going with? Are you going with the fans or are you going with Ryan who, who can't quite decide which way he's going? I mean, you know us well, Rachel. All we do is sit on the fence. We do it as a job. Um, for uh, this grand final, unless Richard Buckley fancies not sitting on the fence. I mean, go on. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sitting on the fence. I, I think it's, I mean, just I'm disagreeing with the people at home in the polls. I'm disagreeing with Ryan. I, I think actually it's quite 
I, I'm going to put my my two cents. I'm going to go quite quite heavy in the camp of Team Hulk Ninja in pajamas. I think they take this game comfortably. I'm even going to say um, that's no disrespect to Guild, but I mean they've just come through a penalty shootout. A couple of chances go against them. They, they're not even going through that particular matchup. It was a lot more comfortable for Team Hulk. Uh, ninja in pajamas, uh, and I think Oilito and Levida Weed will will clutch this up. Two winners, two winners online. Maybe recency bias coming into the Twitch poll. I think potentially a little bit as well. We'll have a look what they're playing with in game and see the in game items that I'm going to do doing the damage for the two squads. Brandon, I've run through this already today. Is there anyone there that maybe honourable mention that you think deserves a little bit of love? I mean, if you look across the board, don't you? I mean, you're seeing the same back lines as we know. The same back lines. You are thinking at home, the you know how do I, how would I have to get on get get a team like this? Of course, these players have been honoured the very special esports edition of Ultimate Team. They can use just for these competitions. But it, people that deserve an honourable mention, I think off the bench we've seen Zidane Zidane, who doesn't get a start supposedly for uh, Team at Ninjas in Pajamas. He's been so influential today in all the games we have seen so far. On the flip side, this is Guild Esports' team. We speak as an Inzidane, and he shall appear. He features in this team. Vieira comes in as a defender. Ruben Diaz does not get a shout in this one. Great to see the difference that these Primark moments have been making, and that's the team of Guild Esports. But I just want to talk a little bit more, Richard, about this grand final, and a little bit about maybe the predictions that we've both had so far. I'm going mean, to say... make one. I, okay. I, I'm going to go the opposite way. Because I think Guild Esports, if you look at their individual players, yes, it's a team game. They've been in this ecosystem for a little bit longer. Of course, they're because they're slightly older. But they look at the difference in finals those players have been to. Might be individually, but getting to a final is one thing, Richard. And, and most of the time, those players have got over the line. If you just look at the portfolio that these guys have had over the last few years, E-World Cup, E-Club World Cup, you know... I sway that way a little bit more. So you're swaying towards towards Guild, is that? Yeah, we, yeah. let's do it. I mean, look, good luck too, yeah. Um, I, I think <laughs> that uh, I think that Levy Weed and Oliolito just just looked so much cleaner and, and in their build-up play, uh, it, they got put under pressure a little bit by Ajax, and they just came out. It, it almost looked effortless as the game approached its final 20 minutes. They killed them off in the, the last couple of attacks, CR7 coming on. Um, I, I think I think they will get over the line. Let's have a look at next week, Brandon, because we've got some incredible games coming up on the FGS Masters Cups. This is only week two of four. Week three is going to be absolutely insane because we've got the king of the jungle himself in action, MS Desari. We also get to see Matthias Bernano, the Argentine coming over to Europe as Team Heretics take on Ducks Gaming. Yeah, of course. What a, a run of players we got there in action. Next Monday, that Monday night FIFA coming your way every Monday throughout March. We're only halfway here. Do not forget that in the FGS Masters Cup. This is the grand final, though. That's got fifteen thousand dollars on the line. We'll talk more about that in a second. Obviously, we've got the Team of the Season Cup also coming up at the end of April, April 29th to May 1st. That is all that we are doing here is building up the storyline for that FIFA tournament. But this is grand final time here in week two of the FGS Masters Cup. Team Hulk Ninjas in pajamas up against Guild Esports. This is the perfect test, isn't it, Richard? Because neither have been in a 2v2 environment like this, live on Twitch, live all around the world, live with $15,000 on the line. This is what these guys have been signed to these esports organizations for, to play in big finals, to win big prize pots, and to create storylines for these organizations. Absolutely. And these are the moments that you relish as a FIFA esports player. These finals, these sort of opportunities to, to put a team on your back and say, this is who I'm representing. And not only am I wearing their shirt in real life, I've got their kit on in game, as we're going to see very shortly indeed. And maybe a little bit of uh, Team Hully, Ninja Pajamas as well. Do you think a bit of nostalgia creeping in for Oilito? Obviously, he, he used to be a, a player there. He's repping the shirt at the moment. It, it's nice to see Oilito back back where he started almost. Oh, absolutely. I mean, 
I believe from, from what we're seeing as well, Olilito will be in the Netherlands right now. That's where they've sort of had their HQ team. Obviously, Team Hullet, founded by Rude Hullet, funny enough. That's where they've been having their sort of base HQ. And, and I mean, this. That, I mean, that's where Levy Deweed, sitting, sitting in that seat right there, is where we got his claim to fame last year, didn't he, Richard? Came onto the scene last year, only at 16 years of age. Won back-to-back -back FGS tournaments. That's where he made his story. We believe we are literally just waiting on a simple click of a button and we will be underway for this grand final here, as you can see. On the flip side, Nicholas in London. I believe then Razek in Germany. I mean, Ryan Pessoa said... That was a factor in a matter that he potentially wanted to change his prediction. I mean, I found that quite interesting. You can see Olito and uh, Levy Dewey just chatting to each other. Whilst we've got a minute in play, if you are watching tonight's broadcast, you are enjoying the action, do get involved with us on social media, especially over on Twitter, at EA FIFA Esports. That is our home of competitive FIFA. Also over on YouTube, where you can catch masterclasses and more, where you're watching Twitch right now, is where all the live events will be. And of course, those future promo exclusive reveals over on Instagram. It sort of feels like we're getting to the exciting part of the year, isn't it, Richard, in the FGS 22 season. We're getting these teasers of what is to come. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait for the Team of the Season Cup. I really do recommend that you subscribe to the YouTube channel there, EA FIFA Esports, because not only do you get to see masterclasses, but you also get to see full-length games. I think last week's final is already up there uh, between XL and Fnatic. You can see the game in full with myself and Brandon's commentary on that grand final. All the game's going to be uploaded as well, as well as the main event scene some of Europe and the world's elite players taking it each other on week by week in exhibition style matches. There's so much content around the esports scene at the moment. We can have a look at some of the best moments from today. And it was the game that started FGS Masters Cup week two between Levy Weed and Oli Lito. And I'll tell you what, Brandon, I'll talk you through him. I just want you to have a look. This is what you're, you're backing against at the moment uh, in Ninja in Pajamas, Levy Weed, and Oli Lito from Team Hullet here. They went 1 0 up. It was across the back post. Latan Ibrahimovic won it, chested it down. A very simple finish from R9 Ronaldo right there. Smiles all round for Ninja in Pajamas and Team Hullet. Blasphemous defending at the back. You can't give that sort of space to anybody at this level. Unfortunately for Ajax, the game just went away from him as that goal did go in. Short corner played for Oilito and Levy de Weed and Bappe inside the box. It was a great finish from CR7. The decoy run from the Parisian opened up the space and the fifth goal came shortly afterwards with only 10 minutes left on the clock. Cross the back post, Latin Ibrahimovic won it and rebound into CR7. I do hear that the game is ready. Our grand final is right around the corner. And our grand final is underway right now in the FGS Masters Cup. Week two, it's a $15,000 one. And it will be a game to remember here. A 2v2 matchup between Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas and Guild Esports. Strap yourselves in because this might be going the extra mile. We've just been to a penalty shootout that Guild Esports have just come out the back of. Whilst on the other side, you've just said, a very different semi-final for Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas. A 5-2 win on aggregate as it looks to kick off in the best way possible here. That could have maybe been a penalty there. Late off, Messi went down to ground. Obviously, Guild Esports kicking from right to left in that white strip. Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas kicking from left to right in their own custom esports strip that is also in the game. Could be an early start. What's a save from Edwin van der Sar. Early, early pressure here. It's LD Esports putting a pedal, pedal to the metal. Connor whipped in. Head away from Marquinhos. Maybe that penalty shootout revigorated Guild Esports here. They left it late in their semi final. But as you mentioned, big game players. They turn up. If you look across the board, Richard, what a. What set of players you've got in terms of people that have won tournaments, been to grand finals, been to just the events that every FIFA player wants to be at? Yes, I'm speaking in a 1v1 environment here, but E-World Cups, E-Club World Cups, E-Nations qualifications, playing for their national teams at 
a really high level, you've just got four winners that have just been gelled together in different teams. And this really should be a phenomenal two legs of FIFA. You cast your mind back to last week. What a final out there as well. XL Esports taking on Fnatic. A week later, we've got another incredible final. And it's crazy to see as well. You mentioned sort of on one playing uh, uh, the really big tournaments, but Levy Tweed's not had the chance because of his age, because of the global pandemic. He's not had an opportunity to go to an E-World Cup Grand Final or uh, any Nations Cup or even numerous different Global Series majors. So this team of the season cup is really one of his first big events on LAN coming up in April. Here come that team forward now. The Levy David is part of into the box. It will go. It's a free header in the box, defended well by Vieira. 20 minutes played here so far. To shout about as of yet. Piling on the pressure. It's Team Hullet. Ninjas in pyjamas, scoop turn, ball rolls coming out in quick succession from Pele. Drops it back to Ronaldo. It's hard eye and a great block from Hullet that time. It's the start. Well, they would have wanted to have the intensity is there, the press is there. Now know more than anyone how important it is to make Guild Esports feel uncomfortable in this scenario. Put them under pressure. Put them under. Just make them feel nervous, if that's even possible. I don't know if Nicholas 99 FC, we've seen him with a heart rate monitor on. He doesn't really get nervous, but just put them in an uncomfortable position. Remember the day of those uh, heart rate monitors all that time ago. Maybe Nicholas's heart rate changed too much. Bit of a nice man for a reason. He didn't crack up the nickname, wasn't it? Pressure does it. Player whose year honestly changed. Moving to London is that team right now. Ooh, Rude Hullet just inches over the bar. It might be a quiet start in the first third of this one, but very nearly Rude Hullet was inches away from finding the right top corner. That wasn't timed. It was just Rude Hullet opening up on that right boot. An early indication of, to me, Guild Esports confidence. You don't take that shot on if you're not feeling yourself, if you're not feeling like things are going your way. So, positive signs if you are a Guild Esports fan, if you're a Nicholas fan. Nicholas pr plural, that done. is. Jude Bellingham, Ronaldo. At to our nine, it will continue to hustle. Hakimi not let him have any sort of time to get out of that one, just about does. We are in the first leg here of our grand final in the FGS Masters Cup, week two. This match worth $15,000, four weeks of FIFA coming your way. And we're only halfway through a 100k prize pool. Which is already being distributed. XL Esports, the one week one with Gorilla. Thomas Lease, the UK. FIFA Jew had a slow start in that one, but a little while, got them things moving and didn't look back in a super competitive grand final against Diogo and Tex or Fnatic. This time round, surprise, surprise, it's more of the same. It is FIFA Esports at the highest level. And I think that last semi final was the ultimate showcase of that, Richard, in that Team Neo against Guild Esports match. It was a game of just very limited chances, but chances that weren't taken which then led for the game to go to extra time and then led for the game to go to a penalty shooter where it had to be decided by the lottery of penalty. Shot comes in again, it will fall kindly back to Mbappe, who's just oh, offside. That's harsh. And half-time will pull up here in our grand final. Nil-nil so far. Yeah, you just saw a glance of the stats there. XG in favour of Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas. Potentially, maybe a little bit of the... Uh, you can see the stats in full there if you want to dissect them. Not too much to talk about possession dominant in favour of Team Hullet and Ninja in pyjamas, but what I was just going to say on that, I think 
it's a good start after being the team that played first. You've had a, a bit of a longer break. You've probably watched Guild Esports play out a penalty shootout. So maybe an hour, an hour and 10 minutes bet between stints of FIFA. But you're coming into this first 45 minutes and you, you've been the better side so far. So very positive signs at the moment. I'd like to see maybe that dribble success rate a little low at the moment for Guild. 88%, but it's not the end of the world. Yet to register a shot on target, however. Uh, Team Hully and Ninja in pyjamas. Four shots, zero registered against the goalkeeper. Yeah, you wonder why there's a slight delay jump back into the second half. It's changes that are being made on the side of Guild Esports. However, any words of communication between Nicholas 99 and then Razek. They should be back underway. How important will it be for both of these two teams, Richard, to go and win a tournament like today? Because technically, it's the first chance in signing for these organisations to really bring the organisation back a bit of prize money. Yeah, not only prize money, but pride as well. Because there's not been that many tournaments, there's not been that many opportunities to put your team at the top of the pedestal and, and this is it and also confidence going into that team of the season cup to say we've played against other sides and we've beaten other sides oh nicely done from r90 very nearly put on a plate for mbappe it's a better start from guild esports seemingly so far they've seemed to be a team that are happy to take the hits and able to just sort of soak up all the possession and all the chances that their team that they're facing is throwing at them. All they need is one decent chance down the other end. It was apparent in the last game where they did that time and time again. However, they've got that much quality. They are also able to do that. Mbappe doesn't fancy a finesse from that far out. If that was Lionel Messi. He might have on that left boot, as we know. This caused heartbreak for so many FIFA players. Jude Bellingham. Said, why not? From that far out, it wasn't timed. It was just wide of the right post. As that ball's flown towards goal, I think maybe the camera that we saw it, it looked like it went in for a second and then bounced out inches wide of the post and inches wide of giving a really quality start in the scoring here for Team Hully and Ninja in pyjamas in our grand final. Mbappe finds Hakimi. That one will just about go for a throw in, which is away from being a corner. 60 minutes played here in this grand final. Not too much to do about so far, but there is so much pressure on this one. Mbappe triggers his run. He's in a running race now. Up against Marquinhos, his fellow PSG teammate. Scoot turns away. R9 needs another option there. Or took a shot from that far out because there just wasn't any other options to take. Great win. It's a pause that's come in from Team Hill in Ninjas in Pyjamas. You're wondering who is who exactly. It's only Lito with that blue cursor. Barbie's head, Levy David. Controlling that red curse, we'll see the small intricacies and button inputs. Each player is adding into this performance. Keep an arm. Those two colours. Ronaldo, look at the space. It's on nine. Is there a cutback available? Brilliant feed. Oh, what a save! It's still just about up for Pele, who gives it back to Jude Belling on the edge of the box. He takes a shot. It's a bit of a ambitious one, to be completely honest. That takes a deflection, but for a split second, that was a brilliant chance for R9. If it wasn't for Schmeichel, we might have had our first goal in the grand final here. As we go back into a pause, I think both sides making changes at this moment. It's always been, from what we've seen so far, CR7 and Zlatan Ibrahimovic for the side of Team Hullet Ninja in pyjamas for Guild Esports, if they are adopting that formation that they were playing before with the narrow, probably looking towards maybe a Eusebio 
to come off of the bench. Lionel Messi could be involved as well. We can see some of the best moments from the game so far. Jude Bellingham coming close. <laughs> Levy thought it had gone in. So did I, Levy. And this chance that it just went wide here. Rude Hullet into R9 Ronaldo. He was driving towards the goal. What a save from Schmeichel standing up to it. And the rebound came to nothing in the end. Back underway with 20 minutes left to play. It, it says a lot, doesn't it, Richard, about a grand final? Of course, not that chance included. But when two of the main chances have been a shot from about 35 yards out, it goes to show just how little defensively both teams are offering up. How compact they are, how regimented they are, how organised they are. Oh, wow. beautiful. It's the only space you get in. See later, this is Mbappe. It's the box. It will go. That would have been... On to remember, Zatalin Brimovic gets his first touches on the ball. Seems to coming on there, but Mbappe says, see you later. Not to one, but two players there from Guild Esports. Outstanding bit of skill from Mbappe. Reverse elastic hold in between two of them. Unfortunately, the cross couldn't find a white shirt. That would have been one of the goals of the FGS Masters had it gone in. CR7 towards that back pose, chance, Satan just couldn't get the leap, could he? The animation just wasn't in his favour. Jao Cancelo, whether he likes to admit it or not, actually did just about enough to just stand in the way. I didn't even see him jump up, to be completely honest. <laughs> just anything is better than nothing for Jao Cancelo. You've got six foot five. There's Latan Ibrahimovic towering over you. Oh, no. Bearing down a goal, what's the back post? Van der Sar picks it up well, battles. And into the pause menu we will go. Expect to see more of this as we get towards more of a narrower and tighter affair, but back to the point that we were speaking about, Richard, before we got interrupt interrupted, sorry, by that little Mbappe run. It, it does sell, doesn't it, when the best two chances you've had for both teams have been from the edge of the box and have been finesses from quite ridiculous angles. Well, there's just been no mistakes defensively. That's what it has been. Both players are on each side communicating well, defending strong, but defending compact. They've been resolute. You've not been able to pull out a cancel and sell a man or a couple of skill moves and get past somebody. It's been tough. And it's when games are like this, Brandon, typically it's moments of magic. We saw Mbappe pull something out on the line. Unfortunately, the cross couldn't find a white shirt. Or a long shot or, or something just to open up the game. Because as soon as one goal goes in, I guarantee we'll see a flurry because the entire match will change. The pace of the game will change. Whoever's trailing has to then come out and attack and they've got to play and they've got to push bodies forward. Ravenberg comes up. An interesting one. Just to freshen up the team ever so slightly. Vinicius Jr. as well. Final nine minutes of leg one in the FGS Masters Cup Grand Final. $15,000 on the line here between these two. Still goalless. Referee pulls the one back for a three kick just outside the edge of the box. What can we see here? Messi over it. I think Hullet maybe. Look at the numbers back in the box. Ronaldo's being moved. Ronaldo will be there in the air. Looks to just nudge it down, which could have been in the path. Two on nine, but it was asking quite a lot. Brazilian forward. Let's see if it's a play into Ibrahimovic. Just can't quite Just get that down. He does eventually. Pull it. Cut short. That final pass at either end of the pitch has neither team. As it looked to close down. What well, is the final few minutes here? Nil nil so far. Here in leg one, we'll be doing it all again in leg two very shortly. And, and we talk about tactical gameplay. We talk about the real insight. You saw Gravenberch come on. Do you see where he's playing? At fullback. That's to alleviate the Zlatan Ibrahimovic back post cross. He's not only fresh, isn't he? He's a very tall player too. And Chance. Can he get the ball in the box? Maybe he can, cuts it back, finds little Messi. Messi on the breakthrough with the last kick of the game. It's a smash and grab effort from, from Guild Esports, sorry. 
But Messi with a massive goal that's going to give them just a leap and a leg up in this second leg of the grand final. It came from absolutely nothing. A simple cutback, find Lionel Messi in just so much space. And at the halfway point here in the MTS Masters Cup Grand Final, Guild Esports lead Ninjas in Pyjamas team elite by a goal to nil. The question is though, will they be able to fight back in the second leg? Wow, more to come after this. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jamie here, professional FIFA player for Team Footwiz, and today I am back with another EA Masterclass. I'll be focusing on my two attacking presets in-game that help you get a goal back when you need to get a win. So in this situation here, as you can see, 2-1 down with about 20 minutes to go in the game. So it's not quite last chance saloon yet. I switched to my attacking tactic, which is press after possession loss. I want to win it back as soon as I lose it in attack. As you can see here, we unfortunately lose, lose the ball and turn it over. But however, our players straight away pressing after we lose our possession to win the ball back in an attacking position, which then means we have an easy shot on target we wouldn't normally have. And now I want to talk to you guys about my ultra attacking tactic, which is my high risk and a high reward last chance saloon tactic on FIFA 22. So as you can see here with our ultra attacking tactic setup, we do lose the ball in our opponent's box late on in the game. However, the importance straight away, as you can see on the mini map in this freeze frame of having 90 depth on our team. The only two players that are back are our center backs and that's all you want. Every single other player on the pitch is high up and obviously constant pressure on as well. It means they're suffocating my opponent. And as we progress the clip, we're able to win the ball back in a position like this where we're swarming my opponent's defense and we're able to win the ball back quickly. So that was my attacking and ultra attacking masterclass for you guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the pitch. Welcome back to the FGS Masters Cup. You join us for the grand final here in week two. But guess what? We've got more of the same next Monday. Every Monday in March, we've got FIFA Esports coming your way. Ducks will take on Heretics next Monday. And Makers will take on Falcons, who will include in their team, obviously, Nightwatch and the King of the Jungle, MS Dasari. And also, let's not forget, at the end of April into May, the FGS Team of the Season Cup will kick off our 2v2 FIFA Esports tournament that will be one to remember. However, now we've got more FIFA to conclude. It's a grand final here in week two, and Richard, we left it at the perfect time in this one. It was a 91st minute winner from Guild Esports. We said they can get a goal from nothing, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, incredible scenes in our first game. If you like what you're seeing now, you're gonna absolutely love the Team of the Season Cup coming up later in the springtime. Huge second leg underway here. Guild Esports with a very, very slight lead. Can they hold on to it or will Team Hullet and Ninja in Pyjamas force a comeback? Only time will tell. 
as we know. QD Sports, give from right to left in that green strip. Team Hullet and Ninjas in pyjamas from right to left. They trail by a goal to nil. Remember, this is a $15,000 game of FIFA as they look to make it two goals to nil. Do R9 and Guild Esports, who just about had the ball for a second. If you're wondering who is who exactly for Guild in the grid, with a red cursor, it is Nicholas 99, the Argentine, and in the blue cursor, just above his head, is M. Razek, the German. Looking to see those small. Took a season. Which player exactly has made the creative pass or turn to be scored the big goal that could crown one of these two teams as champions on the flip side for Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. It is Levy David in the white cursor above his head and with that yellow cursor it is Oli Lito who could be on to score a goal here for his team. Cuts it inside, twist in turn and brilliant save from Schmeichel. Was called into action in the first leg, and he's got an early start here. Does Pramacle moments Peter Schmeichel in the second leg for Guild Esports? Defending well at the moment, however, and keeping that clean sheet intact. But they've won the ball again high up the pitch. Look at this chance for Pele. Oh. Marquinhos, talk about superb defending there. Just got a boot in the way. That was just about enough. Recycled well, Hakimi lays it back into Hullet down Zidane. We'll look to just push that ball forward. He really has show classed. Why well, he is a prime icon moment that should be influenced in every single pro's teams. Today has it in the Zidane. As he looks to come forward to provide the assisting pass. Pele gets back. Quite first leg. Guild Esports will be over the moon to be in this second leg with just something behind them. It's just a slight leg up. It was a grand final victory to Bellingham. He's done it before and he'll do it again. No timing on that finish there. It was just flashed white above the player's icon there. That was Levy David that had that shot. Fancy his chances from that far out. Bellingham again. Chance to counter. Bappe and there could be a counter attack now. If Pele can get going, if R9 can also get going, it's dispossessed ever so slightly. They still have just about got possession. They kept it calm. There was a, a run in behind there for Guild Esports. The counter attack could have been on, but I love the experience coming out and, and showing in full here. Happy to keep possession and, and work a different opportunity into the box to look for a higher percentage chance of scoring. That run of Arno. David V controlling Pele. Trying to make all the problems here. Jude Bellingham picks up the pieces of a heavy touch from Marno. So they still look for the equaliser in this game. They just keep getting pressed in that exact moment there. The timing off the press from Guild Esports has been impressive. Really limited the time on the ball that anyone's been able to have in that midfield. Jude Bellingham or Hullet. Retrospectively, pull back inside, and it And it was time green, they did everything right. It was just Edwin van der Sar that came to save the day for Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. Watch the back post, potentially. Kinos comes short, he would have been pretty helpful in the box. Oh, no! It's time green again, van der Sar being made to work at the back there. Knocking on the door here, our Guild Esports. Couple of flurries. Could be another one. Ronaldo. Up to the edge. Oh, nearly. Easily defended by the Brazilian. Now there's white shirts bombing on forward. Watch our nine. Watch the back post. Look at the space. Pele. Chance. What a save from Schmeichel. Van der Sar down one end. Schmeichel with heroics down the other. I mean, the first touch is, is poor from Pele. He's whipped all the way over, and this is a chance for R9, actually, for Guild Esports. Marquinhos does well. But the, the cross of the back post, it's, it's perfect. It's in his path. He just has to settle it. Just showed too much, but you have to hold your hands up and say, Schmeichel off his line so quick for Guild Esports. 
Yeah, superbly well, didn't it? Cancelo. Back to Pele, squeeze it through, but... It's going to be moments, Richard, very soon. They're going to look back and think, what about the chances that we had? And should we have done better with them, especially that Pele chance? I mean, you can't take anything away from the, the heavy touch that was provided by Pele. That sort of really did ruin the, the chance in itself. Made everything rush, didn't allow for any time. For Levy there towards the back post. Now it's got a leap on him. It's time red, though, and it goes for a goal kick. It was always behind CR7, even I think if he greens it, I don't think he's on the right jump almost or angle to aim it goalwards. Obviously, the green times would have been better than the result that we got, but Guild Esports are looking very dangerous on the counter-attack, and it's not going to sound too sort of mundane at the moment, Brandon, but I'm going to say it. The next goal is everything. If Guild Esports get it, I think they see this game out because they look really good sort of in possession at the back, playing at their own pace. Team Holly Ninja in pyjamas will feel a little bit hard done by. They've had opportunities. And I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a tinkering in formation if it is required, whether that's to a narrow or maybe even a three back, just to try and put that extra level of pressure on Guild Esports at the moment, but with 45 minutes left to play, the Nicholas's still lead. We can't say too much of what's being changed behind the scenes, but I'm excited to see what will change for Team Bullet Ninjas in Pyjamas, because they're going to have to come out and press this game, and it's going to be an internal decision and conversation they're going to have to make. You can see them speaking between themselves in the Levelands right now, coached by Renzo, who's just sitting but in between the three of them. They're going to go for this game. They have to. However, how's Nicholas Razek? And Nicholas 99 FC going to respond. They're up by a goal, but a goal certainly for me would not be the last goal we'll see in this game. I think we're in for 45 minutes of counter-attacking S, non-stop attacking FIFA Esports gameplay here in the FGS Masters Cup. We're back on the way for the final 45 of today. Team Muller is in pyjamas, kicking from left to right. Trying by a goal, need a goal. And after such a dominant semi-final display, winning five goals to two against AFC Ajax. Slightly met their match in this final. Pele, but for how much longer? Whoa, saved and read by Schmeichel. Yeah, he almost clutched it out of the sky, did Schmeichel. It's a nice little finesse shot, good angle. Right positioning of the finesse shot as well. The body type looked, looked good going up to it, but... Schmeichel saying, no, not today, fellas. I'll just take that out of the sky. Sort of came and met it, didn't he? Yeah. Shows the intent of one of these two players, whoever's in control of keeping movement. Chao Cancelo, Pele, is it for a second for Guild Esports? It's a guessing game in the back, an absolute puzzle to try and solve of which way do you, do you defend? Do you dive into a tackle? Seriously, is a difficult situation either end of the pitch at this level of competitive FIFA, especially with the, the cancel of skill moves that every player has within their repertoire. Bellingham driving forward on the flip side. They need a goal. Here comes Team in in pajamas. Oh no! And he tries his best to put it on a plate to Mbappe, but the ball just won't fall there. Just smothered, wasn't it? From Schmeichel, just making sure he got something on it as that double tap pass came back into the danger area. And <laughs> literally, as soon as that chance missed, both teams queued a pause at the exact same time. Give up at the top of the screen. Both teams that have queued a pause right now. So clearly both sides wanting changes to be made as we approach our final third of this grand final. 
What first down to this is going to be for either team that does win here tonight in the FGS Masters Cup. They were chosen both as FGS Masters teams. Only 16 teams were pre-selected before the, the start of the year, which are based to give them the honour. Being one of the most respected esports organisations slash football clubs that we've seen. Involved in the FGS ecosystem. And they're showcasing exactly why by being in this grand final tonight. Only one, though, can be a winner. Guild Esports find a second, you'd have to say that they're on for it. It's a brave run by Xiao Cancela there down that byline. It's a difficult position to defend, isn't it? Because you don't want to dive into the tackle. Of course you don't. But at the same time, you have to find a way to stop the defender. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the opportunity there that came for Zhao Cancelo. We just wanted to get down that left-hand side and potentially get inside. Inside the box, look for a foul, look for a... Maybe a tackle coming in. Didn't fall for him in the end. What a player, though, Zhao Cancelo. He, he's probably one of the players. Him, Hakimi, I think Marquinhos... They're almost certainties. Like even Rude Hullet's not a certainty, Brandon, in these squads. We've seen Bellingham, we've seen Zidane, we've seen Kante, Kevin De Bruyne. But, I mean, in some players, even not use R9. But I think those three at the back, Hakimi, Cancelo, Makinos, are just dead certs, guarantees in the squad. And why wouldn't there be? As you said, I, the only way I see that changing is some ridiculous... And I mean, ridiculous team of the season items to come out. But I mean, even the most, I think they're going to challenge to get on the bench and maybe one comes into the fold, depending on who that's going to be. But the team of the year is always a staple for a reason. And we've seen exactly why these now. 22 minutes left to play here. Guild Esports do, do still lead by a goal to nil. And I think this is where we're going to see that roll of the dice for Team Hullet Ninjas in pyjamas. Vieira doesn't fancy a finesse from that far out. This man might instead cuts it back. Bellingham, another brilliant block at the back by Mark Quinos. The counter's on potentially here. What a ball. The top. What's a ball? What's a save, oh. Schmeichel? He had to be brave there, but it was on near enough a play for Mbappe. Get that man a cape, because he is heroic at the moment. Peter Schmeichel. As we go down the other end now for Guild Esports, Pele into R9. He remains on side. He can't turn. There's just no room to maneuver or even input a skill move. But they've been so good at that, Richard. Team of the Ninja Pajama just playing those little dink passes around the corner that they've been so hard to defend. No matter who they've played against today. And very nearly, it was Mbappé on that time of asking. To be the hero, to send this into extra time, potentially a 1-1 scoreline. You can see the attacking intent now from Levy David and Oli Lita. They have to come forward. They have to really go for this game. It's a horrible touch Awful from touch. Mbappe. He might be punished for it. No, he wins the ball back somehow. Oh, no. Shot from distance comes off the body of the Brazilian defender. Desperate. Still trying to find just an answer at the door. There just isn't an answer at the door. They can knock and they can knock for all they want. Time's running out. And look at the numbers now. As they've had to go forward. Can't find the run he was looking for of R9. Defended just about well by Ruben Diaz. Pushed off the ball by Rude Hullet. Another pause will come in from both teams as they're just gasping for air, to be completely honest. Defence versus attack. Mbappe, chance. R9 tries to pass it into the back of the net in all honesty. And the counter-attack is there. They just need to play the cards right. Chance. Chance. Mbappe. Surely. Oh. No, Schmeichel. It's been ridiculous. And I mean absolutely ridiculous. What a keeper. The kick's awful, though. It puts pressure hey, back gift. on them. Chance to conclude it. Just a running race now. The support is a three oh, or two. It it's absolutely flopped from R9. That was Nicholas Razzett there. Nicholas. Just completely fluffed his lines. We're going back down the other end now. 
for a minute, probably of additional time. That's all she's got left on the clock. And that's going to do us here in this FGS Masters Cup. 180 minutes with just one goal to separate the two. It came in the 91st minute. And that's how narrow FGS ma matchups are going to be this year in this 2v2 environment. Congratulations to the duo of Guild Esports is Nicholas Razek and Nicholas 99 FC. We knew they were going to be a force to be reckoned with. We knew they were going to be an incredible duo this year, Richard. But commiserations to Levy David and Oli Lito. They made that into a great final. And really, in all honesty, just such a tight and difficult game to call. And for both players to even play, in all honesty. No, they absolutely did. But they've done enough. Have Guild Esports. They are your champions, and I tell you what, they didn't do it the easy way at all. But just like XL last week, they've came, they've seen, they've conquered, and maybe the experience has shone through for Nicholas 99 FC and Nicholas Razek. Champions, many a times before, and they can add another title to their mantelpiece. FGS Masters Cup Week 2, Guild Esports are your victors. Yeah, their first accolade since signing for Guild Esports. David Beckham's Esports organization, $15,000 richer and the right push forward for them as they approach that team of the season cup later this spring. Nicholas 99 and N. Razek pictured there. Interesting. And I'm in a very interesting day at the office, Richard. A penalty shootout in their semi-final after a 3-3 thriller and then one goal. A 90th yeah. minute winner from Lionel Messi that at that point is literally the only thing to separate these two, a $15,000 game of FIFA, it's, that's how narrow and tight. I've said it a few times tonight. Some of these games are going to be at the highest of levels in competitive FIFA. And do you know what it was? Uh, you mentioned experience. You mentioned winning mentality. They didn't look outstanding, but they just defensively were so good. They didn't allow yeah. people to create a lot of chances. They kept solid. Schmeichel deserves a statue at, at Guild Esports for that second leg performance. Do you know at the end of the game, where you can see the highlights and you, you click into match highlights and it'll show you the best moments, there was no highlights from the second match. Really, there was, there was no goals. There was no missed chances. It was an incredible game. It was an incredibly tight game. And they're the sort of matches that you're going to see coming up in the next couple of weeks at the FGS Masters and at the Team of the Season Cup. I said it a few times now in commentary, Richard. I said that that's the type of team they are, Guild Esports, in the nicest way. They defended superbly well, but they're a team that don't need loads of chances. We saw that in the best way possible in that first leg. 90 plus one minute. Lionel Messi scores the only goal in that grand final. I promise you this. I reckon that'll be the lowest goal scoring final we'll see in these FGS Masters Cups, all right? Because that one only had one goal in, in 180 minutes. But... I mean, Rich, as you said, we've got two more weeks of this to come, haven't we, in the FGS Masters Cups? Yeah, we certainly have, and I cannot wait to see how the action unfolds over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure commentating a week two here in the FGS Masters Cup. For now, it's back to Rachel and Ryan to break down that grand final. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, Ryan's back with me. One goal, though, that was all that it took, didn't it, for Guild to become our week two FGS champions. Um, Richard was saying there were no highlights in the last kind of 10 minutes. No, there was a lot of stress, wasn't there, Ryan? A couple of silly mistakes, but they did manage to get the result in the end. What did you think of the, far, the first 10 minutes or so, firstly? I thought, well, was, I think um, Richard mentioned it, Schmeichel was unbelievable. I thought as if it, it was a compilation, or it was a save compilation almost. He's made a lot of vital saves. And that moment at the end with the goal kick, deflecting off, I don't know who it was, maybe Mbappe or, or R9, and it almost led to the chance. But then it was, a, it was, yeah, just so many fantastic saves. I felt as if Gil started really well. Both teams, it's really hard to separate. As you've seen, it was only a one goal, um, a one goal lead for Guild. But again, both teams played really, really well defensively. And you could argue that the deserved team won. Yeah, exactly. Well, there no no highlights were there in the last 10 minutes, but there were many highlights in the moments before that. And let's get into this. The analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments for the final time, Ryan Pessoa of Week 2 FGS Masters Cup Final. Take us through this one. Yes, Rachel, it is the final time. We're going through the highlights of the final 
Of course, it was a Guild Esports up against Team Hullet and Ninjas in Pajamas as we take a look at what separated these two teams. Four fantastic players as we go through game one. We've seen some of the, the highlights here. It was Mbappe, fantastic block there to stop, but then the turn. And this was a goal, sorry, against Neo to in fact get them into the final. And we saw the, the last minute goal here, the last gas chance from Arnaud Ronaldo dinked in to Patrick Vieira with a green time finish to send Guild Esports into an extra time and which consequently led to the penalty shootout. It was Lionel Messi who tucked it away and Neil had to score with Rude Hullet in order to, to level up the goals. But of course it was the save and you can see how much it meant to them. And now their second game, their final, was sealed in the first leg. It was a last minute chance here. Mbappe flicked on and he waited, waited, waited. A lack of a cancel pass into Lionel Messi, fired in at the near post. And that was the only goal to separate these two fantastic teams. But again, there were many chances. It was just the one goal that led Guild Esports to the victory. Yeah, one goal was all they needed. Ryan, let's speak firstly about leg one then. The fact that the 91st minute goal there for, for Guild, what does that do mentally to you right at the end of that first leg to set you up nicely for leg two? It really does. Of course, scoring at any time is great, but scoring at the last minute against a top team, you just know that that's a vital, vital goal in the, and it did prove to be. And do you think that, I guess, the def defining moment was the fact that they've got such great experience. Team uh, Guild there over possibly Team Hullet, Ninjas in Pajamas, slightly newer, younger players. It's difficult to say. I, I think, of course, experience plays a factor. I just feel as if they made the right choices throughout the game in a lot of the scenarios. Of course, towards the end, it was a bit nervy from them defensively, but ultimately, up until those final stages, they've done everything right. It's just that they couldn't find the second goal or the third to put the nail in the coffin. But again, it was just it was really close between the two teams. Well, they didn't need it, did they, Ryan? One goal was enough. Let's speak to our Week 2 champions right now. Um, guys, I believe you're here. Guild Esports team... We have Enrazik and Nicholas. Hello, congratulations, both of you. Uh, that was very nervy, last 10 minutes there. Nicholas, I'll come to you first. Uh, obviously, it was only one goal that you needed to become champions. Those last 10 minutes were a little bit stressful for us watching. How were they to actually be involved in the match? Hey, guys. Thank you for the congratulations. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, it's like, as you say, it's, it's stressful. Uh, when you're watching, uh, you can imagine like hey, I'm playing, so it's it's a really it's it's lo like more stress. <laughs> but uh, I think we did it really well. We we have uh, we have a really good defense. So and we or I thought like we just need to keep like this, just defend. Uh, you know when uh, the guys are play uh, are losing, uh, they put press, they put uh, I don't know many formations to to put some pressure. So you need to stay calm, stay patient, and you just like uh, stay with the, the defense like we do. Ryan, do you want to jump yeah. in or I can ask a question to Enrazik? I've got one. Enrazik, I was looking at your backdrop and I love the fact that you have the picture on your wall of 2019 Bucharest Foot Champions Cup 2 when you were the champion, of course. How much do you, do you look at that picture and get motivated to come out and perform like you guys did today? Yeah, my question is for you, Nicholas. Of course, it's your first season competing in Europe. So how would you say it's gone so far? Have you adjusted? It was an adjustment period. And yeah, how's it going? I, I think it's it's OK for me now. I, I, as Nicholas say, uh, every player wants to be the best, wants to be the uh, the winter tournament. But I think at the moment I, I'm OK. Yeah. Like, see, it's really different than South America. You know, it's like South America is more possession, more drop, uh, drop back gameplays. Mm -hmm. And here is more uh, go forward, go forward and uh, stay, uh, stay, things like that. And but I think I'm doing well. I'm trying to adapt. And a good thing is, uh, you know, here you have uh, practice every day. You have the best players here. And I think I'm trying to do my best always. Yeah. 
Well, that worked in the end, didn't it, Ryan? There you have it. Guild Esports, Nicholas and Enrazic. You are our week two champions. Congratulations. And we'll see you in a few months' time, won't we? The Team of the Season Cup cannot wait for that. There you have it, champions, once again on your screen. They leave tonight with pride and, of course, $15,000 richer as well. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Okay, we mentioned already, didn't we, Ryan? Next week, every single Monday in March, we have more matchups coming your way. Let's have a look at how next week is going to look then. Well, here we go. Ducks Gaming taking on Team Heretics and then Makers taking on Team Falcons. Cannot wait for another week of Monday night FIFA action. Ryan, final thoughts, though, before we wrap up today. Congratulations to Team Guild. Um, how good were they? Yeah, massive congratulations. Again, they performed fantastically well. Nicholas spoke about their defensive capabilities. I thought they shut out um, a lot of chances that could have potentially led to them conceding. So they done really, really well. And yeah, again, a massive congratulations. Yeah, massive congratulations. They're a week two champions. They join, of course, XL from week one. Who will be our week three champions? We'll have to wait and see. You're going to join us next week, next Monday night in March. It's the 21st. Again, same time, same place, 6 p.m. GMT time. Thanks so much to Ryan Pessoa, to Brandon Smith, Richard Buckley, and of course, to all our four participating teams tonight. Congratulations once again to Guild Esports getting the job done. It wasn't the easiest route, but they made it. They are our champions, Nicholas and N. Razik. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday. Good night.